Good evening and welcome to Goodrich Field. Tonight it's the season opener in the battle for the paddle. A great rivalry. Champlin Park, Adenoka, Steve Thompson, Tim Anderson, and uh, Tim, hard to believe we're getting another season underway. I know. Can you believe it? It's already here. It's a fast summer. It was a hot summer. It went very quickly. Both teams were out there working all summer in the weird air and the bad air quality. But here we are tonight. All of that work, all of that time comes down to this opening game tonight. And what better way to do it than with a great rivalry like Champlin Park and Anoka. Should be a really fun game tonight. It is unusual to go early in the year in week one, but they'll do it anyway. Champlin Park a year ago, four and five. They bounced back from a really tough year two years ago. Anoka took a step back, one and eight a year ago, but they played a lot of close games. Yeah, that could have very easily been a five win season last year for Anoka. They had a ton of injuries. They were playing a sophomore at quarterback who's now a junior at quarterback. They were in games all the way to the fourth quarter pretty much all season long. It would always come down to a turnover, come down to a penalty come down to some kind of youthful mistake. They think they've cleaned that up. Should be a really good Tornadoes team this year. And Champlin Park, they like to throw it a little bit tonight as well. Uh, we, we could have a long ball game, so settle in. Yeah, we got. I hope you have your throat lozenges. Are you ready? Should be a great night. And we've got Champlin Park and Anoka from Goodrich Field coming up on QCTV. Back to the fence, and that's gone. There it is. Ace to win the set. set. It's caught. 20, 10, touchdown. This is going to be in the gap. Yes, yes, yes. Goal. Yes. Goal. Goal. Yes. The Huskies win their first state championship. It is a late summer night in downtown Anoka, Goodrich Field, the venue. Champlin Park and Anoka, everybody wearing what looks to be beach attire or golf attire. That'll change over the coming weeks as we head for playoff time. Game one of the regular season tonight. Steve Thompson, Tim Anderson on a gorgeous night at Goodrich, and it never gets old coming to this venue. No, it never does, does it? It's uh, you know kind of one of the, the last of them, right? There's only a yes. handful of those stadiums that are out in the middle of town, and this is one of them. You can go down to Hastings as well. It's a beautiful stadium down there. But, yeah, this is kind of a classic little spot. It's always a little challenging to park around here. It's, it's a little bit like that, but it's once you're in the stadium, it's um, it's really fun, and I think the turf the last couple of years has added a nice fresh coat of paint, I think you could say, to this place, and they decorate it well for football games. It's really a festive atmosphere, and it's still er before school for a rivalry like this, so crowd is a little bit, a little less uh, for both teams, I think, than what you can expect to see in the next few weeks. Yeah, particularly a great rivalry that goes back to the early 90s when Champlin Park opened and all the kids on that side of the river stayed on that side of the river and became rebels. Uh, I, I grew up on that side of the river, but once upon a time, a long, long time ago, came up to Anoka and graduated. But uh, my kids, for instance, they're rebels. Yeah, so I'm sure yeah. that, that it's, a, it's a divided household <laughs> right. tonight. Uh, but they'll find a way to deal with it. Should be an interesting one. As you can see, the Tornadoes are uh, going to defer to the second half here, it looks like. So they will kick off. Rebels will get it first to get things started. And this should be a lot of fun to watch here, Steve, as we get set to kick the season off. Luke DeShane will kick it off at the middle of the field. He'll be traveling left to right. White helmets, black jerseys, and pants for the Tornadoes tonight. On uh, A great, great summer night. Here to start the 23 campaign. Anoka and Champlin Park, Rebels in white. They have two players back deep, and the ball's in the air. And on a hop, Arthur Russell's going to grab at the 10, dodge a tackle at the 20, and go down at the 22-yard line. And that's where Champlin Park will start first and 10. And we'll get our first look at Preston Tilkey tonight, who is the quarterback coming back again. This is Nick Keenan's look on offense with Ellingson, Magnin, Jeremiah Finlayson, Eric Lee, Isaiah Wright. We talked about uh, Tilkey, the quarterback, but Arthur Russell, keep your eye on him tonight. Number one, the guy who just returned the kick, and McGuire Borboom. Uh, those players are going to make some plays. Certainly Luke Kilk, another player to keep an eye on tonight as well. A year ago for Russell, seven games, 115 carries, 602 yards, four TDs, a couple of fumbles and Tilkey, a year ago, 70 for 138, 625 yards, four TDs, and eight picks a year ago. He was just a sophomore, and 
Here we go at Champlin Park. Deuce backfield behind him. First play from scrimmage. Up the gut. Tilke fell down. Second man through was the ball carrier for a short gain. It'll be a second down. I think that might have been Gilk who got the first carry. Whether it was Russell, I'm trying to see who got the handoff there. But going straight ahead as you look at Coach Bo Wasserick uh, in his, I believe now, is this his fifth season or fourth? I'm trying to keep my eye. I can't keep it all straight. Wimmer, Fields, Nabosny, Knapp up front. Keep your eyes, Zach Nelson, uh, Zach Anderson, linebacker with Luke Deshane as well, and Zach Welch. And pressure for uh, even Evan Frecking. Keep an eye on him at free safety. Another run off the right side. This time it's Russell over the 25 to the 26-yard line. And that's going to set up uh, another two-yard gain. It'll be third down and six for the Rebels. So uh, two runs to start the ball game. By the way, Tucker had the first carry. Tucker Ware in number 34. Yeah, keep that. Maybe if you're scoring at home, there are some number changes late there if you're scoring Austin Tucker. So it is Tucker and Russell in the backfield. Third down six, as predicted. 10.50 to go. First quarter, Rebels on their opening drive. Tilke rolls out, hits a man on the run. It is caught, stumbling near a first down, driven back at the 31-yard line for Champlin Park on the play was Cole Jer Jerpseth. Jerpseth, a senior at 6'3", the tight end, and they say he did get forward progress to the 32-yard line. A terrific play by Evan Frecking in the open field, and this is why I think he's playing free safety. He was a quarterback last season at the beginning before he got hurt, but they love his athleticism back in the secondary, and he closed on Jerpseth and made the beautiful open field tackle, but it was enough for a first down for the Rebels. Russell tries right side, good cut back, 40, and bulls his way to the 45. Put it on the ground. It may have been pounced on by McGuire Borboom trailing the play. It is enough for a first down. They rule him down by contact at the 45-yard line. Gain of 13, another rebel first down. That's not what you want to be seeing as guys in the backfield like Will Rothram having to make tackles deep in the secondary as that one hit the ground, but they think they might have ruled him down by contact before Borboom even got the pickup, but still a great gain by Russell and a nice start for the Champlin Park Rebels. Rebels pinch it in tight. They're on the move starting at their own 22-yard line, and that one is stacked up. That was the running back, Austin Tucker, six-foot junior, and he was tripped up in the backfield. Maybe he lost a yard, and he did. Avery Fields came in untouched. It was almost like he took the handoff from Tilke that yep. time, and he was able to make the open field or the tackle in the backfield and create the disruption. Nice job by the young nose tackle for the Tornadoes setting up a second and long. And I think for Anoka, Tim, avoiding the big chunk plays is huge. Don't give up the big one. And you want to get into these second longs if yep. you're Anoka on defense too, right? Because this isn't Champlin's cup of tea. They'd love to pound it and get to third and short. They don't want to be playing from second and 11. Here's Tilke rolling right under pressure. There's a hold thrown downfield, almost picked off, but that is a holding every time and held in the backfield there was Zachary Welch. And they had to hold Welch there, did Russell, otherwise that was gonna probably be a sack, so they hold him. Now I think one thing you gotta be really careful with if you are uh, the Tornadoes, especially number 16 for the Tornadoes, Welch on that play, is Welch is getting kind of hysterical about the penalty and about the call, and I'd rather just see him go back to the huddle and play instead of doing all that stuff, because you don't want to irritate the referees this early in the game. Yeah, and it was clearly a hold. I mean, they're, they're going to call that every time. Yep. They're going to march it back to the 34-yard line, and it'll be a second down and very long for the Rebels. And you might ask, like, why not decline that, make it third and long? Well, this... You get to the middle of the field, it's almost four down territory. You don't want to take away that, you want to take away that option. Move them back to second and forever and kind of make the Rebels play left-handed. Tilke, five yards deep right behind him are at the Russell. He'll go straight back, try to tuck it under his arm. Welch gets him at the 33. This is what happens when you get pressure. That offensive line couldn't hold. They bring pressure, and Welch comes in from the inside as everything breaks down. Tilke steps up in the pocket, and there's just nowhere to go, and he's blindsided by Zach Welch. A great play there at the linebacker position. They're going to mark it back to the 32-yard line. They need to get it all the way over midfield down to the 45-yard line for a first down. Wouldn't be surprised if the Rebels just kind of wave the white flag here and punt because they're going to be 
There's not a lot of 32-yard plays in your in your playbook. By the way, they're into the wind. They'll swing it out. Russell has some blocking in front. Cuts it back to the middle, and then he's swarmed under at the 38-yard line. Good pursuit by the Tornadoes there. And that was Ian Wittek, uh, I believe, had tackled him. He's right. It's a good safe play, though. You run a little he's screen. You give Russell some space in the open field. And it's a way to get back some yards. They were able to pick back up maybe 10 yards, make it a little bit of a better punt situation for your special teams. It was actually Javen Starks who made the play wearing 99. Starks made the play a fourth down, very long for the Rebels. And they are going to kick it away. Hansen going to punt for the Rebels. And he gets it away into the wind. It'll take a slight Rebels bounce. And it'll be touched down there, and Anoka will get the ball for the first time this year at their own 39-yard line. It's going to be our first look at this Tornado's offense as we take a look at Bo Wasserick's team, Mason Brent, Logan Burns, Tucker Wilson, Andrew Chris, Max Goosen. It's a very different O-line than what they had a year ago. Keep your eye on young Kamari Hibbler. He's very fast, and Trey Borchers really came into his own last year. Uh, also, Afi Abekwe, a lot of speed at receiver, and, of course, Peyton Padani, the quarterback, the junior, for the Tornadoes. So the penalty really hurt the Rebels, and now here comes Anoka. 6'3", 180-pound junior Peyton Padani. The classic look back to the coach before every snap. Bosman, the running back, takes the handoff right up the middle for a couple over the 40 to maybe the 41-yard line. He's wrapped up there by Tyler Hansen for the Rebels. They'd like to establish Mossman a little bit more, I think, this season as we take a look at Nick Keenan's defense. Hansen, Joseph Bruggers, uh, Jallo, and then uh, Matthew Hine and Jalen Graham, Ashton Kapitsky at linebacker, uh, Jamel Chroma, Arthur Russell playing both ways tonight, Joe Walsh, Brady Shornstein. Hey, you got to have a great player like Russell on the field as much as you can. Heinen at the linebacker had a big year a year ago when the Rebels went four and five. That snap low, Padani picks it up. He's going to tuck it under his arm and get wrapped up after a gain of three at the 44-yard line. He was run down from behind by Heinen, who I mentioned a moment ago. And Heinen's going to be called out number 40 a lot tonight. Yeah, they definitely were able to get that offensive line to break down after the low snap. But credit Padani right there for just being alert, taking what he can get, setting up third down and man manageable as opposed to trying to make something out of nothing. Once again, good breeze from the south or at the Tornado's back because they move from left to right and they're getting a play in and Padani's ready to go. About seven yards behind the quarterback. Ethan Mahasman to his right. Trips to the near side or short side of the field. He goes back. Hunter Heat ball on the deck. He fell right on it. We got a flag in there. Could be a hold, but Heinen was in there again. Also in there on the play was Michael Bruggers, and they broke that up. Both sides' offensive lines are struggling early against the Blitz, as that was great pursuit that time by Bruggers on the inside, along with the rest of the defense of the Rebels. They show pressure. They decline the penalty. It's going to be a three and out for the Tornadoes. So both defense showing their, their medal early. Both teams' offensive lines are going to have to tighten things up just a little bit. So he went all the way back to his 32-yard line on the play. Laws of 12 officially, and the Tornadoes are going to kick that one away. Frecking is into punt. Russell and Schoenstein. Evan Frecking, 6'4", senior, Frecking. waiting for the snap. Once again, he'll have the wind at his back. Rebels have two deep. He gets a snap to his left. Low line drive, fair caught signal, sails over the head, didn't hit. Uh, the return man, Brady Shornstein for Champlin Park. He got lucky there. Yeah, he got lucky that he didn't touch him. It was a low liner. Those are always a little scary to deal with. And the wind as well, I think, added. Now, again, another poor snap. Uh, both, we had a couple bad snaps in this game, and we saw it right there. Uh, some keys to the game. Uh, these weren't my normal keys that I put up earlier, but I'll talk about my keys that I did have. I thought both teams, one of the keys is going to be to play cleaner. Uh, I think both teams, we're going to see who's more polished over the course of this summer coming out with this first game of the season. We could have tons of turnovers early, tons of penalties. Whoever does the least, I think, wins the game. One thing to keep an eye on tonight for Anoka as a key is Peyton Padani's pocket presence. I think the more calm he is in the pocket, the more chances he gets to throw, the more success they're going to have. 
Tilke fires it out to the right. Boardboom catches. Good gain out to the 25-yard line. It'll be his second down and short. He just took that snap and fired it to the right. I love that little quick out pass by Tilke right there. And this is an example of what I was going to talk about with them tonight is reestablishing their identity of what they were when they were really rolling a couple, three years ago where they quick strike in the passing game and they power run you to death. They're going to give it to Russell, and he's going to try the right side now. For first down and more to the 35-yard line. That is another Rebels first down, their third of the game. So they kind of move left and go back to the right, counterplay, and they pay dividends. Yeah, it's working. They want to get to the high side of the field here. They tried running at Welch and at some of the linebackers in the first drive. That didn't work as well, so let's go the other way, and let's pick on some of the other guys up on that side. And Adam Kramer had to come up and make a stop before a big gain. Gain of 10, first down, 34-yard line. Rebels in white, moving from right to left. 5.34 to go in the quarter. They'll fire it off near side and going down to a knee. He is down. The receiver on the play was Boreboom, and the play just down by contact. He'll lose a couple on the play back. Well, maybe one inside the 34-yard line. I don't even line. know if he secured it. Did they just call yeah. that incomplete at the line of scrimmage? Because yeah. uh, it just Second wasn't. And it, that was just a, a, I like the quick throws, and that's exactly what they want Tilke to do. But that one wasn't as uh, set up as cleanly as they'd like, and it wasn't a great throw, and Boardboom wasn't able to handle it. You're right. Incomplete. Second down and 10. Clock stopped. Handed off. Russell in traffic. Wrapped up. A lot of tornadoes around that one. Zach Anderson was in there. Number seven also coming out of the bottom of the pile. Carter Nabosny was right in the middle of it. They got good penetration. That, no that, room to run. That front line, that offensive, that defensive line's doing great. That's Alex Wimmer who was coming up right there on the left end. Avery Field's done a nice job. And you mentioned Nabosny. A really nice start by this tornado group they're playing kind of a 3-4 and they're bringing those linebackers and putting pressure up early third down and 11 for the rebels second drive of the game that started at the 18 yard line under five to go third quarter Tilkey is ready to go still plenty of time on the play clock he'll take the snap roll to his left throw on the run it's dropped it is dropped right in the hands of Luke Gilk and he dropped it I wonder if he heard the steps because Kamari Hibbler was yeah. coming and I think he was ready to lower the boom. I like the little rollout. They like to get him moving. I'll tell you what, Zach Welch has been a menace so far for the defense at outside linebacker for Anoka. He is blowing up his edge and winning his battles one on one. And it's forcing Tilki to throw the ball earlier than he wants to on some of those downs. And right there was a good example of that. I think he may have hustled that throw out. Didn't come out as clean to Boreboom as he wanted, but it's going to be a fourth down. Tyler Hansen on to punt, standing inside his own 20-yard line. Good snap. Not a lot of pressure. High into the breeze. Fair catch signal made and caught, and then a hit at the 38-yard line, and that is a major no-no. Good job by the Tornadoes. Carson Ban waved the arm, did exactly, still took the hit. Hung on to it, and this is going to get the ball a little closer to midfield for Anoka. Yeah, you wonder if Brady Shorenstein maybe didn't see the signal. And I think maybe what I think Coach Keenan might be arguing is it looked like Ban, as he was catching it, was still taking a step forward because the momentum was taking him forward to make it look like he was running. So we'll take a look at the official wow. call. Yep, and it's going to be a big 15-yarder here, I think. Yeah, it'll take him over midfield. This one's going to move it into Rebel territory. If my math is correct, they're yeah. going to start at the Rebel 48-yard line. I was panicking a little bit for Ban on this because these are the ones that scare you to death as a coach when the player is running up on a wobbly punt in traffic. That's usually where you get fumbles. Great job by Ban is to make sure he got that ball. Here comes Podani. Running back to his right. And Podani's going to roll out under heat. Gets it away, and it's dropped. Hit put on the play there by Jalen Graham. The intended receiver Podani's was P.J. Wazdrick. And it'll be second down and 10, but they were chasing Podani to the near side of the field. 
Yeah, the O-line right now not holding up for Padani. That They rolled Padani out to buy him a few extra seconds, and he got the throw he wanted. But even if that was caught, it wasn't going to be a big gainer, maybe a yard, maybe two at the most. Not able to give receivers time to get down the field here. They need to hold up for Peyton Padani, try to give him an extra second or two. Terrell Cummings, the running back. Showing blitz here, now backing off. 5'10", senior toss, sweep right side, short side. Little room to the edge, bounced out at the 45-yard line. He'll get a couple, it'll be third down and eight right there. He's gonna be kind of a gadget player. Uh, you know, last year, they, I mean, two years ago when he was a sophomore, they loved his speed. Last year, he had an injury to his ACL, didn't play. Uh, he's back this year, and I think you'll see him in these sort of specialty down situations where he can get in the open field. Evan Fracking's going to come on the field, and he's going to come over to the near slot for the Tornadoes. Carson Band's going to go out left, way out left, a back way. And Mosman in at the running back, just to the left of the quarterback. But Annie, straight back, fires it to the right, caught at the 35-yard line and falling down for a first down. That was a good pitch and catch, Trey Borchers. One of the targets that didn't come back, they graduated pretty much the entire receiving core a year ago, but Trey Borchers is back, and they love throwing to each other, do Padani and Borchers. They play basketball together as well, have a great relationship, great vibe, and that was a great little pitch and catch, as you mentioned, just a little quick out. 34-yard line, first and 10. Tornado is on the move in Rebel territory. But Danny back, swings it out. Mosman catches in traffic, dancing near a first down. Good power running after the catch. And he'll have it near the 24-yard line, and I think we're going to move the sticks. That's the pocket presence I was talking about for Peyton Padani. The one thing the coaches loved about him was his ability to be cool under pressure. As you can see, here comes all that pursuit at him, but he has enough presence of mind to not panic that screen. Hibbler the catch in the slot inside the 20 to near the 19, and the Tornadoes have some momentum, and they're going to hurry up. Yeah, definitely quickening the pace here. Coach Bo sees something he likes, and he's going with it with quick subs. Gain of four, second down and six near Hash. But Annie, the quarterback, Cummings the running back to his right. Wide receiver split way out to the left, two to the near side. Here's Cummings, off a tackle, not much doing. The Rebels read that beautiful play there. Jalen Graham all over him. Yeah, you have to think when Cummings gets on the field, and this is something that Coach Bo is going to have to try to disguise as the game goes along. Cummings gets on the field, you feel like he's probably going to get the ball. So I think there's going to be some keys that the Rebels are going to show when that happens. And right there, you get a great example of it. Graham zeroed right in and made the play quickly. Now sets up third down and five. Yeah, long five at that. They need to get it inside the 15-yard line. Tornadoes with the wind at the back as the sun sets across the way. Padani rolling out, buying time, still has time. Toward the end zone, caught, touchdown! Touchdown of Beckway! <laughs> Wonderful throw by Peyton Padani, and an even better catch by Avia Beckway. This is all set up by them rolling Padani out, but look at the presence of mind when we take another look at this. Look at how calm Peyton Padani is as he's rolling out. The defense is collapsing. He's running to the boundary, and he's able to stop and throw a dime to Afia Beckway. Tornadoes are on the board first. Luke DeShane will try the extra point. They're going to go unbalanced. They're going to set everybody up way over far side of the field, and DeShane's going to take it, go for two, and not get there. <laughs> Rebels played it well. Breaking it up was Shornstein. That's, let's take another look at the touchdown, then we'll talk about the extra point again. If you notice, Padani's not in a rush, not panicking at all, and then stops, has the presence of mind to throw that strike to Afia Beckway, and that's a dangerous throw sometimes, to throw it kind of back over your shoulder, but that one was a perfect ball from Padani to a Beckway. Tornadoes are on the board. 
that two-point conversion, I still, that formation scares the heck out of me, but it sometimes works great. That time it did not, and it's 6 nothing Tornadoes. Tornadoes goes seven plays, 47 yards, and it took 209, and Podani hit a back way for the touchdown from 20 yards out. Two-point conversion, no good, 6-0 Tornadoes. I think what we liked about that drive, Steve, was Padani moving in, in, you know, out of the pocket, getting him rolling on rollout passes and bootlegs and throwing screen passes, mixing it up a little bit. I thought that was key. Helped that offensive line out. It bought him some extra time, and they were able to make some plays. I also like the way Coach Wasserick sped up the offense, worked a little bit of a no-huddle situation uh, as he got across the 30-yard line. So a good drive on a short field. Tornadoes have the early lead in the home opener. The battle for the paddle, Champlin Park and Anoka, a rivalry that's been around over 30 years now. It's hard to believe that, yeah, isn't it? That's crazy. My goodness. And if you're Champlin, you don't panic here. You still can move, you're moving the ball. Let's go. And the Tornadoes kick it off with the Shane line drive. And it's grabbed there by Shornstein. And he's going to carry it to the 20. Bangs his way to the 24-yard line. He's finally knocked down there. Good solid hit by Austin Meyer, the junior for the Tornadoes. And Champlin Park will get it for the third time here in quarter number one. And they've moved the ball. They've had first downs. They've been done in by negative plays and penalties and things like that. But you'd like to see a clean drive here if you're Nick Keenan. Let's try to string some first downs together. Let's get Russell into some space and see what we can create. Two wide receivers near his side. Russell the lone running back. Preston Tilke, junior quarterback, 6'4", 190 pounds. He's going to hand it off to Russell. He dodges one tackler, but not a lot of running room. Maybe got a yard on the play. Uh, there was a tornado in the backfield. Might have been Luke Alexander all over that play in the backfield. And Avery Fields came up and again made the stop. And at the, you know, you don't see the defensive tackles making those kinds of plays all the time, but he's already made two or three blow up plays in that interior line of Champlin Park. And they're winning at the point of attack right now. So they do give him two. He, he found a way to get two yards on that. Out to the 20. Six yard line, Tilke gets sacked back at the 19 yard line. Big play there by the Tornadoes and that's Wimmer. Once again, the D-line winning the battle at the line. There's Alex Wimmer, the left end, coming in, winning his battle one-on-one -on -one to the outside, closing the pocket down and taking Tilke to the ground, setting up another third and long for the Champlin Park Rebels. So nowhere for Tilke to go, and he eats it. Once again, Wimmer knocks him down at the 19-yard line, coming up on one minute to go in the quarter. They might need to think about rolling Tilke out a little bit and buying him some time. Third down, 15 yards to go. Tilke will roll to the right. Tuck it under his arm. He's being chased, spins, gets to the original line of scrimmage before he's wrapped up. Good pursuit play there by the Anoka Tornadoes. And Making that play on the outside, Avery Field, the senior. He's seeing it well. Fields has made two or three big plays already. And the Tornadoes are feeling it right now. The momentum is on their side. They're winding down this first quarter, 30 seconds to go. You got to feel great if you're a no -go. And back to receive for the Tornadoes, Carson Ban. To punt it away is Tyler Hansen. His third punt already in the game. Low line drive, fires sideline, takes a big Rebels bounce, and this will be down near the 35-yard line. So Anoka, for a play, will have the wind at their back one more time. Yeah, they, I think they took advantage of it. They, had, they, they took advantage of their kickoffs, got deep down the field. And you'd think, I think if the wind stays like this, it might very well be a factor with both teams wanting to pass to the degree that they do. It has turned out to be a lovely inning, and there's the Tornado head coach. Coach Bo, I'll tell you what, he has really infused a, a culture, a swagger, an energy to the program, and he's done really a terrific job. Here's Padani, third possession, Tornadoes, a punt, a touchdown. Let's see what happens here. Barring a big play on this one, it'll roll over into quarter number two. Here's Padani, low snap, hands it off. 
Mosman, not much. Maybe lost a yard. He fought his way back to the 35 yard line. That'll be the final play of quarter number one. Season opener, Champlin Park at Anoka. Tornadoes lead at 6 0. Quarter number two coming up on QCTV. One dollar. Who says? Gavin. One of the deadliest mass shootings in U.S. history at Pulse nightclub in Orlando. Walking into the building for the first time after the shooting, it was crippling, but it had to be preserved. If you're an ally of this community, speak out. There are more of us together than apart. It is the power of love in its rawest form. The death of George Floyd, who died in police custody Monday night. Turning my pain into purpose is pretty much what I have done to start this foundation. It's going to take more than just us, you know, as a foundation. It's going to take the community, the world, to help us make a change, because it, it just can't be us. Quarter number Quarter two number underway, two and it started with a penalty, and they had a nice little pass set up to Ethan Mosman, but it's going to be called back, and you, you can see him marching off that penalty right now, and speaking of the officials. Yeah, right on cue. We were just ready to introduce him, Steve, and they go ahead and get themselves some TV time. Uh, head referee tonight, Donald Adderley, along with the line judges, James Andre, Tony Lloyd is the umpire, Mitch Lonnie, and John Andre. So that's our crew working tonight's Thursday night game. Yeah, and it is a beautiful night. Sun's down, a little bit of a breeze here at historic Goodrich Field. It'll be his second down, 21 yards to go. Tornadoes need to get it out to their own 46-yard line. Peyton Padani is the quarterback, waiting for a play from the sideline. And he'll roll to his right. Send it over the middle, nobody home. They weren't on the same page on that one, and Padani was under a lot of heat as well. Yeah, Padani was, nice job of showing some pocket presence. You wonder if there was just a little miscommunication between Abekwe and, and the quarterback, because Padani just threw it to a spot and expected him to be there, but nobody was home. Yeah, and there was a spot there, but he ran upfield instead of cutting into the middle, and now it's third down and 21. So penalties have loomed large here in this game already, and you might expect week one. Well, we did talk about what, what team would be a little cleaner. So far, Noka's been a little cleaner, but this penalty here is going to maybe deflate a drive. Clock stop, 11.29 to go. Quarter number two, Tornadoes lead at 6-0. Padani straight back, has a little time. Over the middle, it's caught wow. and decked, and then losing the football, taking a huge hit was Carson Ban. And I think that was Aaron Russell with the huge hit. Russell came out, made a huge stick, and this is one Padani might need to think about. It was a good throw, but he kind of hung him out to dry because I think he needs to get rid of that ball a little bit faster. I mean, he put it on the letters, but he put it in a spot where Ban was going to get destroyed as soon as he touched it, and Russell teed him up. So the Tornadoes are going to punt it away. Evan Fracking will punt from his own 10 yard line make it the 11 two players back deep for the rebels he's punting into that win low line drive it's good kick fair catch signal by Shornstein at the 41 yard line and the rebels will have by far their best starting field position and I think this win could be a thing now that you're going with the wind we'll see if this changes the way the rebels do things uh, on offense the reason why I wonder about that pass too is because I feel like Bo's system 
has a lot of movement and players catching the ball on the fly, not necessarily standing still. And that time, Ban was kind of standing in a spot to catch that ball and wasn't in a movement position. So it makes me wonder if he wasn't supposed to catch that on the fly a little bit. Here comes Champlin Park, Tilkey the quarterback. Russell the running back. And we had a little movement near side. That was an extra step by Luke Gilk. Five-yard penalty, it'll be first and 15. The penalties and the negative plays for Champlin Park have just been been killer so far because they've been able to get some first downs, Steve. You know, on the first couple possessions, they've been able to move the football, but they're constantly being undone by a penalty here, a penalty there, but then a negative play, a sack. And you just got to cut those things down and get some positive yards here. Yeah, and Gilk, he's going to get caught every time on the end of the line, taking an extra step. Boar boom split far out to the near side. Tilkey takes a snap, steps up, gets hit. No room whatsoever for Tilkey, an outstanding defensive play by Wimmer again. Yeah, get Alex Wimmer, here comes Wimmer and Fields and Nabosny. They continue to win the battle at the line of scrimmage, but also credit those outside linebackers for Anoka. You got Aaron Knapp on one side, Zach Welch. They are closing in on those tackles, and I think it's forcing Tilkey to step up into, into trouble. Second down, 20 yards to go from their own 31-yard line. They need to get it to the 49. Handoff runs, so he's dragged down from behind. Hardly any running room whatsoever. And there's a lot of tornadoes in the backfield, just about every play right now. Yeah, he, he just had nowhere to go. The, the battle at the, 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 if this game was coming down to anything right now, we would say that the defensive line for Anoka is winning against the Champlain Park offensive line. And it's not giving Russell any room to run. It's also not a great down and distance for Russell to, to move or do anything in. It becomes pretty predictable when you're sitting on second 19. Scoreboard says third down and 18. I, I argue it's 19. They need to get to the 49. 10 minutes to go, that set an okay Hennepin math going to work for me. <laughs> Spinning around in the backfield, thrown down again is Tilkey. Great penetration by the Anoka Tornadoes and all over the backfield. Starks again. Yeah, Junior Javen Starks, 6'2", 195. It's about speed on this defense. And you're seeing it, Adam Denke, the defensive coordinator, has got his guys ready to go. And they are winning the battle against Champlain Park. Adjustments are gonna be needed here by the Rebels. Loss of 11 on the play, and the Rebels are gonna punt it away again. Tyler Hansen with the win. Wobbler caught at the 44-yard line, still on his feet. And not going anywhere is Carson Ban, but job one, hold on to the ball. 100%, that is the really the only job for the punt returner is just make sure you secure the ball and give the offense an opportunity to work. If you're Coach Bo, you'll take it at the 42-yard line every single time. There's no need to do anything extra, and they're going to get to work with that. And the Rebels, some mistakes. Four punts and four possessions. You know, the Tornadoes will have it for the fourth time. They have a touchdown and two punts in the game so far. Are you going to look at Jeff Berkeley, one of the former head coach here at Anoka, now serving as kind of the top defensive assistant to Adam Denicky, and he's really the eyes on the field, and you can see him relaying those messages from Coach Denicky. Here's Padani, Milesman to his left, man in motion, and flags fly. And yeah, this is the preseason procedure penalties coming into play right here. Yeah, I think this was delay. No, it is false start. Nevertheless. They took it right down to zero, and now it's first and 15. So both coaches have stuff that they need to work on. I'm, I'm sure they're already going through in their mind what they want to work on come Monday. Oh, I'm sure that they cannot. Or they, Tuesday. I'm Coach Bo and I'm sure Coach Keenan as well on the other side will be watching film at uh, 1030 sharp tonight. I'm confident. So five-yard penalty, first down and 15. Ball between the 36 and the 37 yard line. Padani with my husband. We are winning right now by doing the little things. Moves over to the right. And then Van here on the near side, also on the near side of Beckway, caught the touchdown pass. Now an Anoka timeout, 9 16 to go. And 
Anoka's got the 6-0 lead. The two-point conversion failed. They played sponsors, better than Champlin Park, but I'm sure it's a reminder. Hey, guys, they're, we're only up by six. We, we got a lot of game here. Yeah, we still got to keep our, our health in order, right? If you're Coach Bo, you call this timeout to get everybody back on the same page. It's clear that we've had some miscommunication. A little procedure penalty. Plays are coming in kind of a little late. So that means signals are getting crossed somewhere. So this is a good timeout by Coach Bo to see if they can uh, – recalibrate things. The one thing you don't want to do, and Champlin did the same thing in their last possession, you don't want to come out of a timeout or come out of a, a situation where you've been on the bench and the first thing you do is jump off and create a procedure penalty. And a lot of festivities. We'll see the band perform at halftime. They're here and ready to go. A good student section for Champlin Park across the way wearing white. By the way, they open at home next week against Maple Grove, first Friday night game of the year. Here we are on a Thursday night. Meanwhile, the Tornadoes host St. Michael Albertville next Friday night. So two in a row here at Goodrich for the Tornadoes. Couple of tough games for both, too. But Danny tried to set up a pass over the middle, and he got decked. Coming in to hit him was Tyler Hansen. Actually, two Rebels there. No time whatsoever for Padani. Yeah, Hansen closed in on one side, and it looked like it might have been um, a jo a Jallo on the other side who closed in to put pressure on Padani, force him to get rid of that ball when he didn't want to. Running back Cummings out there. So this is where I wouldn't be surprised if you see Cummings get a little screen pass here, maybe get him out in the flat. Second down and 15, 9, 12 to go, quarter number two. Anoka into the win. Padani gets hit as he throws, incomplete. Putting the hit on him for Champlin Park was Bruggers. And it was an instant he let it go. Yeah, exactly. And it's lucky it didn't get picked, but a Beckway was the nearest receiver. They were trying to throw a little out to a Beckway. Good job again by the Rebels putting pressure on this offensive line. And what worked in the first drive for them when they scored was they were moving Padani out. They haven't done that these last couple, and he's getting hit for it. P.J. Wausrick to the sideline. Kamari Hibbler trots onto the field. A little more speed with Kamari. This might be your four wide receiver set with Cummings, a potential fifth option. And dropping back, Podani has a little more time. Lobs it out near side, jump ball. What a catch at the 45-yard line at Champlin Park. Borchers went up and hauled it in. Yeah, when in doubt, go find Trey Borchers. That was sort of a prayer from Peyton Padani. That looked a little schoolyardy for the Yanoka Tornadoes, but it totally worked. It was just like, I'm just going to chuck it up, find Trey Borchers somewhere. Good idea. Trey Borchers just making a play, winning the one-on-one -on -one battle. Gain a 19 first down. Padani swings it out. That one's busted up over there. Champlin Park did an outstanding job flowing to the play over there. And I think that was Fawn who got there. Giovanni Fawn busted that play up. And he he almost forced a turnover and gets a three-yard loss on the play to the 48-yard line. That was outstanding. Excellent. They saw it coming the way they saw the running back move out like he was going to block. They knew it was going to be a little quick little smoke route and blew it up before he had a chance to develop. So Padani with now my husband to his left at the 48-yard line. Second down and 13 for the Tornadoes. And they're going to throw a lateral. This is actually a trick play of Beckway. Touchdown, Anoka! Well, <laughs> they got two quarterbacks on the roster who can make plays, and you could see that coming a mile away. The way Frecking came in motion, but then went behind Padani. You kind of knew it was going to be a little backwards pass, and they set up that play perfectly. A Beckway was wide open, totally had the Rebels fooled on that one, and now it's a 12-0 lead for the Tornadoes. How about that? It was clearly a lateral behind the line of scrimmage. Obviously, you can't do two forward passes. And Frecking found a wide open a back way, and he just walked into the end zone. 48 yards, 12-0 Anoka, and it looks like they're going to line up for an extra point. More of a traditional extra point this time. 
Moran yep. bangs it through. That's Ver that's Veronica Moran right there, the senior soccer player, making the extra point. That's an awesome one for her. Good to see her get on the field. Let's take another look at this touchdown. And look at how it's set up. Watch Frecking come in motion, but then watch him immediately go back behind the line of scrimmage. Padani is able to throw it perfectly, and this is just beautiful timing and a beautiful throw by Frecking. It couldn't have drawn it up any better. Beautiful, beautiful design by Coach Bo and Trey Delamarter on offense, and they are able to get a score, 13-0 Tornadoes. Four plays, 49 yards, 120, and that was Padani lateraling it over to Evan Fracking and then Fracking to a back way, 48 yards. PAT is good, 13-0 Tornadoes. Wow. That was, you know what? Nice time to try that play, right? They haven't even shown you a look even close to that. When they've brought Frecking in, they've played him legitimately as a wide receiver for the couple plays he's been in. Haven't even shown that they're willing to do that. That was a nice little, nice little trick play by Anoka. Nice little wrinkle in their offense. Well, a year ago, 48 of 80, 560. One yards, four touchdown, three picks for Frecking. So it's not like he threw two a year ago. No, he can play, yep. and they they he's got the arm. They love Frecking's arm, uh, and love his athleticism. Uh, they love they they really do feel like they have two very very good quarterbacks here on this team. The Shane into the wind on a hop. Rebels take it. And they'll get it out to the 25 yard line, but a flag flies. That was Shornstein. But this one may be coming back. Could be a block in the back here. We'll take a look. And Champlin Park really struggling. They, they had a decent opening drive where they picked up a couple of first downs and then the penalty. And really since then, they, they've been hurting. And the offensive line's really struggled. I think that's been the nature of the game so far. You have to really credit what Alex Wimmer, Avery Fields, and the Bosney, but also then Zach Welch and uh, what those linebackers have been able to do for the Tornadoes. They have been blitzing and bringing pressure, and they have been winning the battle at the line of scrimmage. And it's as much as we have the bells and whistles of football, it's still just about what happens in the trenches. And right now, the trenches are being won by the Tornadoes. And this is going to take it all the way back to the 10-yard line. So a penalty will march it on the return all the way back to the 10-yard line. And that's where the Rebels will start with 7.51. And they're desperately trying to get something going. Preston Tilke is the quarterback. They'll hand it off to Russell. He'll cut back and surges out to maybe the 15-yard line or the 16-yard line where he's finally forced down. Good pursuit play there. Zach Anderson was in the middle of that. But a gain of five, and the Rebels will take it. Yeah, Anderson and Welch combined there for the stop, and that's a nice pickup for Russell as he's finally able to get some movement forward. And getting to second and short, third and short, going to be big for the Rebels here if they can get a couple of those on this drive. Still a lot of game midway through quarter number two. They're down 13-0. And now they'll hand it off. Russell left side, running room 20 out to the 22 before he's finally knocked down. Uh, from behind, that was Wimmer chasing the play that getting out on the tackle, but that's going to move the sticks, and that's what the Rebels needed. Absolutely, and then they don't have to abandon their identity either. They don't have to throw because they're not in third and long. When you're in second and short, you can do everything you want to do in your playbook still, and that time they want to stick with it. They'd love to give Arthur Russell a ton of carries here, but you got to be in the right down and distances to do it, and right there they did. Fourth first down for the Rebels, first down and 10. They're going to run it again, and why not? Short gain over the left side as Russell was the ball carrier Russell. again. And I, I think this is a great way to restore order. Absolutely. Yeah, you you want to keep the ball away from Anoka's offense here. A good, long, sustained drive for Champlin Park would be just what the doctor ordered. And I think, yeah, a healthy dose of Arthur Russell on this drive is going to be the name of the game. Gain of three is second down and seven. Ball far hash, 25-yard line. Tilke's going to fire it out, and this one is caught and tackled out at the 29-yard line. Well, they fired it out to the near side. Boreboom caught it around almost a little pick play, but Austin Meyer still made a pretty nice individual play over there. The tackling for the Tornadoes has been terrific. Yep. I think Coach Denneke will be thrilled about that. 
when they get to halftime. They have been able to make every open field tackle that they've needed to make. That was an interesting play because, yeah, they had a different setup in the backfield that time. They didn't have Anderson out there. They went instead with uh, the secondary back, which was uh, Tucker. And so they threw on that down. Third down, four yards to go. Tilke again, way out to the left, pushing, shoving, caught at the 45-yard line. Well, that was a phenomenal battle over there, but Gabizmore makes the tackle. Gabizmore hauled it in somehow, and no flags on the play, but they were pushing and the shoving, and Jaden hauled it in. Great catch. Yeah, this was a great throw by Tilkey. This is right in the hands of Jaden Gabizmore, who is the senior, six foot tall, 160 pound wide receiver, getting a chance. Fumble there. Ball on the deck, and it is recovered by Champlin Park. Tucker fell on it. That'll be a loss. They will get it back. By the way, on that play, a gain of 27 yards, and that was a terrific catch, and I think an excellent no call by the officials. Yeah, I, I felt like both, both players were getting after each other, a little hand check there, and that was just a, a really good battle by two guys on the outside. I'm fine with the refs letting them play on that one. That was great. Ball out to the 49-yard line, loss of maybe three on the play. And the handoff, Russell right back at it. Breaks a tackle inside the 45 to the 44-yard line before he's finally knocked down by the Tornadoes. Wyatt Rothram. But this is the challenge now, Steve. Because you had the negative play on first down, here we are in third and long. Ball's going to be at the 43-yard line. That was that was a tough six yards, a tough five yards for Russell. Well, he runs hard. Third down, seven yards to go. Actually, third down and a full eight. They need the 35. Tilkey over the middle. Did it? Now uh, it goes incomplete. That was Sturdivant. Stirred about the intended receiver at the 33-yard line. This has got to be four-down territory for the Rebels. Well, Telke is yeah, getting the play signal right now, but he got hit nice, as he out. threw that. Hey, he took a shot after he threw that ball, and I thought it was going to be really close to a late hit, uh, but they did not throw that flag, but there was pressure coming on the outside. Tilkey had to hustle that throw. I thought it was still going to be caught, but it may have been altered a bit because of that pressure. Tornado's continuing to give uh, Tilke some trouble. So Sturdivant couldn't haul it in, and the punt is away. High end over end with the breeze, takes a big hop into the end zone. The Rebels had a lot of white shirts around it, but they couldn't down it inside the five, and the Tornadoes will start first and 10 at their own 20 yard line. So they get a big break there. Two schools of thought though, Steve. What's your thought? Do you, you want to go for it in that spot, or do you want to punt right there? You know, it, it's tough the way Anoka has been moving the ball as of late. You want to maybe give your D uh, a, a bit of a break and a longer field to work with because if you don't get it, all of a sudden the Tornadoes up 13-0 are on a much shorter field. Yeah, I like the punt right here. It's a conservative play, but it's a good play by Coach Nick Keenan because, yes, you're forcing Peyton Padani to now have to go 85 yards in three and a half or four minutes. And I would much rather do that than if I didn't get it and I give Peyton Padani a short field. They're going to swing it out near his side. It is caught quickly there by Ban, but Ban didn't have any running room. They just swing it out to him. And Arthur Russell in the middle of that, maybe a gain of one. See, the reason why these plays are not going to be as effective right now is because you haven't been able to stretch the field in the middle with like those 15, 20 yard slants to get those players playing back, get those corners stopped from jamming at the line of scrimmage. And until they do that, I think those plays are going to have a tough time succeeding. Almost like a run, the Tornado's up 13-0. Sure, they'd love another score, but they don't want to give the ball back to the Rebels with any time on the clock and the wind at their back. Play comes in. Cummings is a running back. And that one's off the fingertips of a defender, Kapitsky for Champlin Park. There was no one home, and I think that was another play where he and a backway weren't on the same page. Yeah, there's an incredulous Bo Wasserick right there, and he has that stance about 16 times a game. Uh, that was, yeah, not... Peyton Padani throwing to nobody in particular, and we don't know if that's quarterback or if that's receiver yep. or if that's play. We just we don't know on that one. So Padani with 
Clock stopped. 3 11 to go in the quarter. Third down and nine. Tornadoes up by 13 here at home. Rebel show blitz. He'll scramble to his left. There's flags. That one into the middle. Knocked away. The intended receiver was banned. Really good coverage there by JLo for Champlin Park. But the flag in the backfield's usually a hold. That's right. Usually a hold. And I think the you know receivers wanted a hold on the defense, but they weren't going to get that. Holding was thrown first on the offense, so they. I'm try, I think they'll might. Well, I, I think they'll decline and force fourth down here, but maybe not. Maybe they'll back them up and uh, try to force some really good field position for the Rebels' offense. I could kind of hear Bo in our microphones down there with Dan on the field. You could hear him maybe look to a Beckway, say the play's an out. You need to run it out. And I think that was the that maybe gets our yep. answer. Yeah, and it, there, there's a couple of times, and it is game one, where Padani and Abekwe weren't on the same page. With that said, Abekwe's got two touchdown catches yeah. in the game. Abekwe's so. made some great plays. Yeah. And, you know, the one thing we know about him as a basketball player last year, he got tons of minutes for Coach Jefferson. Maybe not the most skilled offensive player, but, man, he can really battle you. And we got a fake punt, tucking it under his arm. It's Frecking, Frecking, another big play in the game. He runs it for a first down out at the 35-yard line. How about that? Well, that is an example of Coach Bo saying, you know what, I don't want to punt into this wind and give him the short field. I'll take my chances on a fake punt, but we got another flag. Yeah, flag, uh, holding penalty on the edge. Terrific call. It was a wonderful call, fracking an opportunity to make another big play, but there was a hold on the edge, and this will really force the Tornado's hand now as they mark it down to the 10-yard line. Yeah, this will now, uh, I think all the tricks are out. Now you will just punt here if you're Coach Bo. And now you're punting, though, from five yards deep in your own end zone, and that's um, a tough spot to be in for Frecking. But, but Frecking can do everything. He's playing receiver, some quarterback, some safety. Now he's punting, and he just gives you so many options. Rebels should get in an outstanding field position. The receiver's ground ball snap, almost blocked, got it away, a low-line drive. Takes a big tornado bounce to midfield, and it will stop right at midfield that's about the third or fourth low snap of the day for the tornadoes second on punts so that's going to be something they got to keep an eye on snappers got to get that ball in the air to fracking that was dangerous that was almost a potential disaster he got it away though and then took a big tornado bounce as it skipped all the way out to midfield and here comes champlin park still plenty of time and tim if they get a score they can get out of this and say hey we played poorly and we're only down by a touchdown they could say yeah we took a couple of trick plays we yep. had some penalties we weathered a storm and here we are we're right there so here they come once again preston tilke is the quarterback and now we're getting a timeout on the field so they are resetting uh, things here. Maybe somebody took a timeout. Was it Champlin who did? Yeah, I, I, I wonder about all of this because... Referee, oh, there's a penalty here, it looks like. So let's see what they want to do here. They're going to pull a flag out, I think, or something. Let's see if we can pick up what the ref wants to do here. Running into the kicker. Wow. On the defense, penalties decline. They'll take the result. They don't want to repunt it because they weren't going to get the first down automatic. So it was probably just the short little five yarder. Yeah, and you're not going to get a roll like that most of the time. So you're going to take it at midfield because you, you do you do a do it again. You might end up with a much worse result. Yeah, especially with the uh, the holdings with the with the snapping situation. Maybe if you were the, had the wind with you, maybe you'd take another shot at it. But certainly not now. 
Russell gets a handoff. Good cutback. 45 still on his feet to the outside. 40, 35 darts out of bounds near the 33 yard line. Gain of 17 for Arthur Russell and the Rebels are on the move. That's all Arthur Russell. This thing was going one way. He stops right at the point. Watch this, right there. Makes that nice little turn, totally reverses field. Beautiful counter play. And he got the Tornadoes flat footed. Big game. At the top, he talked about turf. That's a turf cut. That was, <laughs> that is on a dime. And that was beautiful from Russell. First down and 10 for the Rebels. Tornado 33 yard line, wind at their back. Late second quarter, Russell again, run down from behind. Anoka all over him. Avery Field was right there. Avery Fields has played a terrific first half for the Anoka Tornadoes. Coming up from behind the line of scrimmage and again winning the battle on the interior of the line and able to catch Russell as he tries to make the move to the outside. And this is what's done in the Rebels. First down, negative plays. This is probably the fourth one of the first half. Second down and 12 now at the 35 yard line. And we have flags. Next might, might be a procedure on the Rebels as they may not have got the play in or they jumped. And that's going to back them up even more. So penalties have really played a huge factor, especially for Champlin Park. Another procedure call, this will mark them out to the 40 yard line. And they seem to happen at these times, Steve, when they get a first down, they move the ball a little bit, all of a sudden, negative play, penalty, we're back, and now we're playing second and 17. So here we go with Tilke, new running back, Austin Tucker, he's seen action. Running three to the high side there for the Rebels. Junior into block, Tilke over the middle, caught! 20 yard line, still on his feet, down to the 12 yard line. That was Boreboom, McGuire Boreboom. 154 to go, and they're gonna mark him down right at the 11 yard line, gain of 29. It looked like there were more receivers than coverage up there at the top when they moved that third receiver and made that trips play. There was gonna be an opening, and Boreboom had a wide open look timeout here, it looks like. It might be on, maybe it's on, Anoka. Anoka takes the timeout. That is their second timeout. 1.44 to go in the quarter, and once again, Champlin Park puts it into the end zone. They'll go to halftime saying, we didn't play well at all, and we're still in the football game. Absolutely, this is a big one, and that was a nice little wrinkle from Nick Keenan's offense right there. As they bring that third receiver, they got McGuire Borboom to kind of be hidden in that trips, and he was able to kind of run and take a little, a little inside pass, and he was wide open over the middle as he crossed it. Beautiful little play and design, and I think it caught the Tornadoes off guard. I don't know if they saw that coming. A beautiful little wrinkle there. And a couple of really nice throws from uh, Peyton Tilke these last few drives. That was that was a beautiful throw. Yeah, it just goes to show a little time to throw works wonders, and he had time there to deliver that strike over the middle. Well, and that was on a second down and long. So yep. that, that was a throwing down. Tornadoes had to know that was coming, but that's a big-time play from the quarterback. All right, Russell in there to the left, and Tilke waiting for the snap. Takes it, looks left all the way into the end zone. Jump ball! Incomplete. Intended receiver, Gabazamore. That was close. Good pressure that time. It was a one on one battle on the outside as Gabazamore had a look right there, but Wyatt Rothram did a nice job on the coverage. Just enough to bat it away. It still looked like Gabazamore was going to catch that thing, but uh, nice job by Wyatt Rothram. He got an arm on it, almost made the one handed which certainly would make all the highlight show, but look at this, got an arm on it, but couldn't haul it in. Now, Wa Rothram didn't turn around to look for the ball, but at the same time, he didn't really touch. He kind of put his hands up to see if he could alter the vision of Gabezmore on that one. Man goes in motion toward the left, Gabezmore sprinting out, Tilke has a 10, the five, to the pylon! Touchdown, Rebels! Nice job getting the quarterback out into the flat. A little designed quarterback run. They blocked it up beautifully. Tilke turned it on, a nice gear there. Once he cleared the corner at the 10 yard line, there was nothing you could do about it. Nice job by the Rebels, a big time score with a minute and a half to go. 
extra point pending. Evan Swanstrom, Holder, Shornstein. 132. Snap, spot, not good. Kick away anyway wow. is good. That was magical. Shornstein somehow got that down. I was going to say, was it even being held? Did he just kick that off the ground? That was impressive. Let's take another look at the run, the touchdown. This is a designed run the whole way. Toki rolls out. He might have had the option to throw, but no chance he was going to do that. He's able to tuck it to the outside, and he had nothing but open space once he cleared the corner. A great run there by Preston Toki. So that one, four yards, 50 yards, took 120, capped by the 11-yard touchdown run by quarterback Preston Tilkey. He just tucked it under his arm around the left side and got to the pylon. I want to see this extra point again, Steve. Let's see if we can see. Yeah. And yeah, oh, he just got it up. It almost looked like Wimmer slowed down on the corner. I would have liked to have seen him run full blast trying to get the block. It was almost like he held up long enough for them to get that ball set. Got the extra point across. Well, and Swanstrom waited. He, he, he stagger stepped yeah. before he got the kick away. That was... Pretty incredible. So a big score for the Rebels. Anoka still leads at 13 to 7. Now for the Tornadoes, they still have time, and how do they answer? It's a quick strike offense, and you wonder if Coach Bo might cook up another trick play here. The trick play got him the second touchdown, but their first touchdown drive was actually just a really good, effective drive. Been a little bit stale offensively. They've had some penalties. Last drive was really done and in by the penalties. They got to have a clean 90 we'll seconds here. Two players back deep for the Tornadoes at their own 10-yard line. And the kick is away, taken on the near side. That is a back way up the sideline, stolen a speed over the 30 to the 33-yard line. Good return by a back way. And the Tornadoes now, decision time, 126 to go in the half. Pedal to the metal? I think so. I don't think Coach Bo knows any other way. Now, they only have one timeout, which I do think is going to be a factor here. You wonder if Champlain Park's going to do anything to bail them out on that because they have all three timeouts. So they're going to have to think about chunks here. You can't run the football, and you can't throw these little quick smoke routes. You need to get 10 yards at a time because that's what stops the clock. And you need that to your advantage as much as possible in these short two-minute offenses. Peyton Padani is the quarterback, is running back. Cummings to his right. Two wide receivers out to the right or the far side of the field. Straight back. Padani over to the near side of Beckway, near a first down at the 44 yard line. And he's knocked down there. Arthur Russell on the tackle. Got a little help from Kapitsky, but it is a tornado first down. That's what we just talked about. They're going to have to get it in chunks, which is not what they've been doing offensively in this first half. They had a couple of big plays, but for the most part, they've tried to do it with screen passes and quick little flare routes. That time you ran a nice quick out down the field. Good job by a Beckway running to the sticks. But Danny gets a play. Cummings to his right, slot to his left. He'll roll out. Swings it back. It is caught. Frecking 50, 45. Cuts back. Still on his feet down to the 40-yard line where he's finally dragged down by Russell. Another big game for the Tornadoes. They'll call him down, actually, at the 41. Still plenty of time. 51 seconds to go in the half. Frecking stayed in bounds, so he didn't get a chance for a clock stoppage. Now the clock is running again. Gain of 15, 44 to go in the half. Padani rolling out under pressure, throws it on the run. He was just being chased around over there by Heinen and, and had to get rid of it maybe before he wanted to. Yeah, but at least it's an incomplete pass. He threw it right at the feet of his receiver. No chance of that being completed or intercepted, but it stops the clock, gives you a chance to set a play that you want here. You did what you had to do the first two plays, did the Tornadoes. They got a big couple of big chunks. You got it into Champlain Park territory. You have some options with 39 seconds to go in one timeout. Second down, 10 yards to go, Rebel, 40 one yard line. Padani, now it's running back Mossman to his left. Two wide receivers either side. Danny's gonna put it under his arm and get smoked at the 39 yard line. He got hit and he got hit hard by Graham. 
And Coach Bo looking over at, at his guys saying, hey, guys, we need to block that up. And that's pretty close to a horse collar tackle. Padani a little shaken up after that one. So that's a good timeout by Coach Bo. 31 seconds to go in the half. It's a third down and 10, or third down and nine, I should say. It's going to be an interesting play call here for Coach Bo Wasserick and the Tornadoes. They give him a yard, third down, and nine yards to go, 31.5. Tornadoes led it 6-0 at the end of quarter number one. Two-point conversion try was no good, but it was Padani throwing a strike to a Beckway. They went for two, didn't get it. 6-0 Tornadoes after one. Then they grabbed a 13-0 lead on a gadget play. Padani swings it over to the uh, backup quarterback Evan Fracking and he found a wide open a back way down the field that was a 48 yard touchdown strike point after was good 13-0 tornadoes and then champ Park in a short field they get a touchdown run from Preston Tilke from 11 yards out and the point after was good 13 to 7 tornadoes Third down, nine yards to go for Anoka your here on their home field. Your best play has got to get called right now, and it needs 10 yards. He drops back under pressure, sets up a screen to the right, and that was busted up by Champlin Park. Carson Ban was the intended receiver, Passes but that one didn't have much it. chance. Carson no, not Band. really. That was good pressure by the defense of Champlin Park, really breaking up the line. Pass you might have had a chance at a little screen play there, but nine. again, Champlin Park did a really beautiful job defensively. Their defense has really caught fire here the last couple of possessions. Now you're gonna go for it, and I don't, I don't blame you here. You're on the 40-yard line. They're probably not gonna do much with it with 20-some-odd seconds to go if you don't get it. And if you do get this, you got to go down and spike the ball and buy yourself as much time as you can. Fourth down, nine yards to go. Ball at the 40-yard line. Mossman, the running back. But Danny straight back, sets up a screen. Mossman breaks a tackle on his feet. 30, 29-yard line. That is an Anoka first down. He broke a tackle early in that play and did it on his own. They're going to get to the line quickly. That clock's going to start as soon as that ball is whistled in play. they got to have a ball ready to go, and they do. They whistle, they go, and... We got the stoppage there. Maybe nobody was set, or maybe did Champlin jump. I'm not sure what they got here. But there are flags all over. That was a gain of 12, but that was Ethan Mosman all on his own. He and almost got tripped up. Oh, I, I, man, they think that the, the, the Tornadoes jumped. Coach Bo doesn't like it. Neither Nobody likes it. Might have been the case, or they might have thought that they moved too quickly, but they That's drop them back five, five yards. Place. Get right to the line. I don't mind the penalty. Just get right to the line and get ready to run the next play. You still got 17 seconds. First down, 15 yards to go, 34-yard line. The penalty does stop the clock, which is great if you're Anoka, even though you don't like the five yards. Padani catches it with one hand, under trouble, thrown down. And as he was going down, he let it fly. But I think he's going to be ruled down back at the 45-yard line. Yeah, you wonder if not. If they, if, I gave that, or they got to give a grounding penalty. But he took a big hit right there. Yeah. And uh, he was a little slow to get up as the pressure was coming. That offensive again, both offensive lines, I think, have been leaky in this first half. It has not been uh, a, a really great half of football played by both sides' offensive lines. So now the officials are gathering. The, the ball spotted at the 42-yard line. Anoka getting ready to punt it away. That'll be Evan Fracking. Or are they are actually they? Yeah, are they going to punt here, or is this defense switching over? Did they declare that like a fumble or? Yeah, I. Or I wind the clock halftime. Okay, so they said wind the clock halftime. That was a little confusing. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there, but it, it could have been grounding, could have been an incomplete pass. But they say that's it. We played two quarters in the opener. And the bottom line is Anoka leads Champlin Park 13 to 7. We are going to take a break. Stick around. Quarters 3 and 4 on the way. As Steve Thompson, Tim Anderson, and our great QCTV crew from historic Goodrich Field on a gorgeous Thursday night.
In the year 2020, a significant development emerged for ANOCA. Through the efforts of the Minnesota State Legislature, an omnibus bill was enacted into law that contained a unique provision that exclusively pertained to the city of ANOCA for the establishment of what is known as the ANOCA Social District. The Anoka Social District serves as a pioneering initiative within the state. But what exactly is a social district? It designates a specific area which patrons can purchase and enjoy alcoholic beverage from licensed establishments. They are then permitted to freely travel through the predetermined sections of the city, encompassing public spaces like sidewalks and streets, or take part in the social district-sponsored events and activities. A comprehensive management plan has been developed as a blueprint that outlines policies and practices for efficient district operations. Additionally, a dedicated webpage will be established to provide comprehensive information about the district, including hours of operation, rules and regulations. QR codes will be on permanent signage to facilitate easy access to this resource. Here are some key points for everyone to remember when participating within the social district. Patrons can purchase drinks from licensed businesses within the district. Drinks must be served in specific cups that are specified by law. The city will determine the district's hours of operation, and alcohol is not allowed to leave or enter the social district area. The initial hours of operation for the social district kickoff will be from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., seven days a week. The initial Anoka social district boundaries encompasses a variety of public spaces, including the City Hall area, Riverside Memorial Park, the Mill Events Center, including Jackson Street, 1st and 2nd Avenue, north of Main Street. The launch of the Anoka Social District will take place between September 6th and October 7th. This pilot program is to encourage ideas and input in shaping the district's ongoing development and success. Through this, the city can build a dynamic and inclusive social hub that enriches the Anoka experience for both residents and visitors. To learn more and to keep up with updates about the Anoka Social District program, visit anokaminnesota.com. You're not going to get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Mama! Like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. How Anoka became the hauling capital of the world way back in 1920, we had a lot of kid issues. Tipping over cows, they were taking apart wagons. Buckwheat, you go in the kitchen and get all the knives and the daggers and get your Porky, you go to the bathroom and get all the poisons and ducks. Okie doke. And the town came together to create this diversion of naughty behavior into what we now have, a hundred plus years festival. Those who say uh, we proclaim it, uh, thank you for making that statement, but it's not true. We are. Harry Blair went to Washington, D.C. as a 12 year old. I mean, can you imagine that? 12 years old, Washington, D.C., and wants a declaration made, a proclamation made that acknowledges we are. So he did, and here we are. We actually have that document in our gift store, which is located on 2nd Avenue. And so here we are enjoying a wonderful town, a wonderful festival, and it's over 100 years old. My name is Liz McFarland. I currently um, was the past president for Anoka Halloween and now am a volunteer. I just remember being here five year, when I was five years old and seeing my first parade and then marching in it. You know, you don't realize that everybody isn't in a parade and how special that is until you become an adult and can kind of step back and look at how awesome your town is. 
So, you know, step back 100 years, we've got this parade going on with kids. 100 plus years later, we still have our kitty parade, the big parade of little people. We also have added a night parade, and then we have the Grand Day Parade. So we've started one parade, we're into three parades. In the 60s, we acquired Miss Anoka from the Chamber of Commerce, and that turned into Halloween ambassadors. So we've got parades, a coronation, then we get into years of bingos, movie nights, pumpkin way off, pumpkin bowl, which is the huge kickoff for a festival. The high school has things come and go, um, but ultimately we surround them with a family friendly focus for Halloween. It's all about the kids. It started with the kids and it continues with the kid mindset. It's not done without the volunteers. We have this great city that supports us. You know, they're kind of the host for this whole event. But ultimately, it's a separate organization. It's a separate nonprofit that has provided this entertainment for everyone to attend. We hold on to our 100 year tradition with a lot of pride um, and I want to see it continue on with the best efforts and thoughts of what is good for the city, what is good for the kids, and how do you maintain a healthy volunteer nonprofit organization. I hope and wish for the town of Anoka to continue a parade in whatever fashion it is, one, two, three of them, whatever it is, that we see another hundred years of the largest, longest running parade in our state. TV is proud to announce award recognition for 2022, including 10 Telly Awards, and two ACM Hometown Media Awards. QCTV is dedicated to providing high quality content for our community. We are grateful for the support and we look forward to another exciting year here at QCTV. Hi, I'm Mitch Carlson. I'm co-owner and general manager of Elm Creek Brewing Company alongside my partner, my dad, Wade Carlson. Uh, we opened up in June 2020 and we're just coming off of our third year anniversary. Over the last three years, Elm Creek Brewing Company has become a staple in Champlin as the destination for great beer and social gatherings. And now they're expanding both the space of their brew house as well as their involvement with the city of Champlin and their community. This year, the city of Champlin invited us to be part of their Mississippi Crossings event that, that just opened up this year. Um, it's been a huge success for us so far. We really appreciate the involvement in that. It's been really fun to see the whole community come together, see a lot of people that are regulars here, lots of new faces, old faces, people that I grew up with in the city. So 
so it's been really fun to be able to see all that come together. Mitch also gave me a tour of both the old and new brew house spaces to show me how much more variety and efficiency Elm Creek Brewing will be able to provide to their customers. We opened up as a five barrel brew house. We only had four fermenters, quickly grew into what was six, eight, and then 10 fermenters. Um, we now have kind of outgrown that space a lot more rapidly than we thought we were going to. So we just added on an additional 3,500 square feet. We uh, tripled the size of our brew house. We are now a 15 barrel brew house. We also upgraded into our own canning line so that we can do everything on site and nothing by hand. It's all automated, so everything's a lot easier. Our beer quality is going to skyrocket compared to what it was in the past. Alongside with our addition that we just put on, we are also upgrading our tap tree. We're going to be starting to put a lot more focus on easy drinking crisp lagers. Um, it's something that all of us here uh, have a passion for and love to drink. Uh, we're also going to have uh, expanding our rare candy sour series as well as IPAs, um, different kinds of ales, Belgian wit beers, just a whole variety of that, as well as a larger barrel age program. Alongside the expansion of the brew house, Elm Creek Brewing Company is looking forward to expanding their in-house summer attractions to be available for people of all ages. Make sure to check the event calendar on their website to see all their offerings throughout the year. We're going to be doing a lot of family days where we have the whole back patio blocked off towards family related events. So anywhere from like petting zoos, um, reptile demonstrations, movie nights. We have just got expanded seating and a grass area where people can relax, bring their pets, their children, hang out and enjoy a nice quality beer. Um, we also, uh, our Oktoberfest party every year has always been only one day. This year we're expanding it to a whole week's uh, a whole week of events. It's going to be focused mostly on loggers. It's going to be called Logtoberfest. We haven't settled out all the details yet, but it's going to be anywhere from four to eight new loggers that we'll release all the way through the week with our um, Oktoberfest release being the day of our big party. Hey boss, you okay? Yeah, I'm good. You sure? I said I'm fine. Since I was little, it was only like me and my parents. You think you created family out of characters? Yeah, of course. I'm gonna take that and make it into a song. Hey, son. Hey, Bob. You can talk to me. It's been really, really hard for me. So I'm throwing a holiday party and I need some alcoholic drinks. So today I'm at the West Better Values Liquor Store, one of two Anoka locations. Right off the bat, I'm blown away by the selection. So I find my beer, I grab my wine, but I need some extra help assembling some cocktails. That's where Kevin comes in. Kevin is the operations manager for Better Value Liquor Stores in Anoka. But Kevin is so much more than just a manager. His level of expertise is extensive. So while Kevin shows me the ropes, he also explains the connection to the city of Anoka and why drinking responsibly is so important to Better Value Liquors. Friendly staff, convenience, a good selection. We're working on the selection and adding to it. So we're owned by the city of Anoka, so the residents of Anoka own us. 
All the money, all the proceeds, all the profits go back to the city. First and foremost, we're in the business to control the sale of alcohol by not selling to minors and not selling to obviously intoxicated customers. Number two, generate revenue from alcohol sales. So we control is the biggest thing. We check IDs for anyone that appears to be 30 years of age and younger and anyone in a group. 28 years of experience and knowledge in a lot of areas. Still don't know everything about everything, but I can steer people in the right direction, um, help them out. Especially look, I love talking about wine, bourbons, craft beers. Um, yeah, we can, we can find something for you. If you're looking for information regarding our stores, uh, you can check out our Facebook page. There you'll find information um, on when we're having tasting events, ta in-store tastings, any construction um, changes. So hey, if you are looking for more than just a liquor store, stop in to Better Value Liquors and say hi to Kevin or one of his many friendly staff members. The West location is located at 809 West Highway 10 and the East location is located at 847 East River Road. Hey, happy holidays and remember to drink and to drive responsibly. I taught for 20 years, but I started forgetting my lectures. Eventually, he had to quit. My therapist recommended we go to the doctor. The early Alzheimer's diagnosis allowed us to take control of the situation. He's been such a positive force and, and so loving. Thank you. You're welcome. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. Last week, Brandon met a girl on a dating app. One day after work, he finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being too pushy? Maybe it was too... Hey, hey, sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. I would love to go on a date. How does tonight sound? Brandon tried to play it cool, but inside he knew. A girl so smart, so responsible. She must be a keeper. Attack to do eight. There it is, a water tower that overlooks Goodrich Field here in Anoka. In the season opener, the Tornadoes lead the Rebels 13 to 7 at the half. Steve Thompson, Tim Anderson on a gorgeous Thursday night here for the opener, Labor Day weekend coming up, and then we move into Friday night action next week. And let's take a look at uh, some of the highlights from the first half. You got to give an oak a lot of credit, Tim. Hard hitting D, and then and they get it done through the air. Uh, Podani rolling to his right, throws it into the end zone of Beckway. A nice catch in traffic. Two point conversion failed. 6 0 tornadoes. Yeah, it's been a couple of, uh, it's been the good and the bad for Avia Beckway. He's had a couple of brilliant plays on touchdowns, but then some miscommunication and some maybe some bad route running. But this was a big play in the first half as well. The little backwards pass to Evan Frecking, who throws a dime to Avia Beckway with nobody around him. Tornadoes led 13 rip as they made the extra point from Veronica Moran. 
and they were rolling. Defense was playing great for the Tornadoes, and uh, finally the, the Rebels get a short field and something to work with. First, first of all, long, nice play to Jaden Gabezmore, which got things going for Champlin Park. What they were done in by were penalties and negative yep. plays on first down. Had five of those in the first half, but this was the big touchdown. They were able to get Tilkey in the open field. He took it uh, to the far side for a score on a QB sweep, and they get on the board. Extra point, good 13-7. Yeah, so Champlin Park, big touchdown at the end of quarter number two to get right back in the football game. But Anoka has a lot to be happy about. They, they came up with some big plays defensively. They, they played well. I thought their defensive line and their linebackers were terrific in the first half. Huge plays from Avery Fields, huge plays from Alex Wimmer. I thought Zach Welch was a menace. Uh, they did some great stuff. I, I was really impressed with what the, the defense was able to do for the Tornadoes. They really won the battle. I thought both offensive lines, Steve, were a little leaky. I, I want to see them tighten up a little bit, and you wonder if that was the main crux of the halftime speeches. We're just about ready to go here. Thursday night opener, and a ton of games uh, around the Metro North tonight, as you might expect here on opening night. Champlain Park here in Anoka, St. Michael, Albertville, and Blaine, Coon Rapids, Centennial, and Osseo, Maple Grove. A lot of games in the Metro North. And Os this is a tough, I talked to, when I talked to Coach Tony Bazal this week, he said there are a couple uh, weird trends in this thing. You don't want to see Osseo early because that's when they're just at their best. They are so prepared. They're very machine-like. He actually thought catching Champlain Park early in the season was a good thing because he thought this Rebel team was going to really improve as the season went along. And catching them kind of in the early stage of the season was really the way to go. And they kind of got a break, they thought. A year ago, Anoka, we talked about it before we went on the air tonight, Tim. Even though they were 1-8, and eight, they, they were in a lot of football games. They, they could have had a 500 season easily. Absolutely. Yeah, and it was really just about uh, they had some veteran wide receivers, Paulson, those guys, they've graduated, moved on. But it was really a lot of these juniors who are now seniors or sophomores who are now juniors who really took steps forward last year. And uh, that's what I think Coach Bo Wasserick is depending on. There you saw a look at Coach Bazal there for a second ago. I want to give him some screen time. I promised him some. All right, here's Evan Swanstrom. Rebels in white. They'll kick it off from left to right. Still a bit of a breeze, not as big a factor as it was earlier in the game. And here come the Tornadoes. And the return man, Mosman, out to the 26-yard line. So good return, and Anoka will start first and 10. Yeah, those flags are about as still as they've been all game. And uh, that would negate a good side of the field, which has been uh, this side, right? That's been going this way, going to the right. So the Tornadoes took that 6-0 lead after one. We're up 13-7 before, or 13-0 before the Rebels got their touchdown to cut it to a six-point game at the half. There he is, Peyton Padani, the quarterback for the Tornadoes. Keep your eye on him. He took some hits at the end of the first yes. half and was a little slow to get up after a couple of them. I just wonder kind of how he's feeling. Osman, who had the return, gets to the outside, wrestled down at the 30-yard line. Good tackle around the hips by Brady Shorenstein. It'll be second down and six yards to go for the Tornadoes. Early in the game, the Tornadoes ran it quite a bit, especially on these kind of uh, running back kind of delays. And uh, they had some success with it, but they sort of abandoned it as the half went along. You wonder if Coach Bo will go back to that as he did right there. Yeah, and take a little heat off your quarterback, Peyton Padani, who did take those shots. Padani waits for it, high snap, tosses it. Uh, spins short side of the field, spins out of bounds. Not a lot of room over there as he goes out of bounds at about the 32-yard line. Pursuing on the play, Michael Bruggers. Also over on the play, Jalen Graham. And they, they were all over it. Now it'll set up third down, and let's call it four yards to go. I think that's okay for Anoka, getting a couple run plays, getting yourself to third and short. You open up your playbook a little bit more here, which I think is what both coaches want. I don't think they had the opportunity to really do that in the first half. Here come the Tornadoes. A back way, two touchdown catches near his side. Yeah. 
He'll throw it out to the right near the first down sticks. It is caught, cutting back to the middle. Still on his feet out to the 48 yard line is Carson Ban, I believe, and it is Ban. Ban makes a nice play. It felt like this was a bit of a floater. It took a while for this one to develop as this was just a high ball, but a good job of just precise route running by Ban as he ran a perfect out and ran right to the stick. Gain of 15, they'll swing it out incomplete. That was almost a lateral. Ball still on the deck. Cummings didn't come up with it. That was right. That was close. Yeah, that was very close to not being a forward pass. I think refs made the right call, but that's going to be a conversation Coach Bo will have with Terrell Cummings about staying with the play. You just don't know. We didn't hear that whistle right away. You got to know what's coming. But again, Cummings comes on the field. They want to get him the ball. They want to get him the ball in space. Wouldn't be surprised if you see him get a touch here. Hibbler in a back play on the near side. Cummings back to the left to the quarterback, Padani. Padani near his side, cuts it back, goes back to the right, and there'll be a haul down no gain, maybe a yard. But nice the Rebels read it well. Shirt tackle that time from Nicholas Joseph as he was able to hang on to Padani as it looked like there was a little bit of daylight, but if you take a look right there, actually I take that back, 44, Michael Bruggers had the play and drug him down from behind. So now it's third down, 10 yards to go, and Oak on their opening drive, a quarter number three. It started at their own 26-yard line. 10-21 to go, quarter number three. Clock on the move. Cummings, the running back to the left, to Padani. Padani, under heat, steps away from trouble, throws it near the ground. Wasrick, I believe. No Borchers right there. Uh, it was Borchers wearing eight. But that hit the turf. Once yeah, again, no was time. Short yeah. No time for Padani. They're in his hip pocket as soon as he steps and plants his back foot. And the problem is you're a little bit predictable offensively in third and long. But look at how they bring no untouched pressure from the outside. That's really good by the Champlain Park defense. Anoka's got to see that blitzer coming from the outside and pick that up. No answer for it right there. Evan Fracking to punt it away. Schoenstein and Russell back deep inside their own 25-yard line. Good punt. This is Schoenstein letting it bounce, catches it on a hop at the 13, up the far sideline, knocked out of bounds at the 25. That may draw a flag, and it, it does. does. He was thrown down well out of bounds, and that's a mental mistake that the Tornadoes didn't want. Now, you, you got him on the white line. You run him out, then you let him go. But instead, you try to do a little suplex move, and uh, that's going to cost you 15 yards. you got to be a little smarter than that. And you can see Coach Bo uh, providing an earful right there uh, as they get back to the sidelines. Just not what you're looking for. That'll take it out to about the 42-yard line when they march it off. And the Rebels will have good starting field position with just under 10 to go in the third quarter. And this is a tenuous six-point lead, so it's not like you can sit here and play fast and loose. You have to be uh, really smart, playing good fundamental football. I talked about it at the beginning of the game. Who's going to be the cleaner team? Who's going to make the fewest mental mistakes, especially at clutch times? Chamblin Park made more of those mistakes in the first half, and that's why they're trailing. But if you're Anoka, you can't afford to be making those mistakes early in the second half. Here come the Rebels. Preston Tilke at quarterback, a rushing touchdown. A big kid, 6'4", 190-pound junior. Played in seven games in his sophomore year for the Rebels. Hands it off. Arthur Russell tries the right side. Somehow comes out of there, still on his feet. 50, 45, 40. Scrambles out of bounds inside the 35-yard line. He looks stopped at the line of scrimmage. Popped out of there and picked up a big gainer. I, I thought he was stopped, and the Toga fans over there for the Rebels love it, as that was some kind of run by Arthur Russell. Take another look. He looks totally bottled up here, but the Tornadoes do not. A, they don't do a very good job of tackling here, and Russell gets out of trouble, and there's nothing but air and opportunity down the field. Touchdown saving tackle that time by Kramer. 23-yard gain, first down Rebels. They're on the move in Anoka territory. Russell cut back again in the middle. Still on his feet at the 30, and then finally brought down there. 
But it is a gain of five, and there's a rebel banged up. One of the offensive linemen slow to get up, but Russell very elusive in the middle of the field. Boy, he can put his foot in the ground and go quicker than a hiccup, man. He is so quick with that first step. Just plant and go, and you have... I mean, my ACLs would be left on the field if that was me doing that, but that is incredible to watch. He runs with such speed and such ferocity. And probably with, with this injury timeout, a chance for the Tornadoes to regroup a little bit as they give up the 15-yard penalty, then the 23-yard run, and then another five-yard run, and all of a sudden they're reeling a little bit, and one of the O-linemen off and trotting off the field okay, and that's... Isaiah Wright for the Rebels. Big guy, 280 pounds, 6'2", senior. We got rolled up on there, it yeah. looks like, just a bit, especially as everything's reversing away from the play. Pretty easy for that to happen to those O-linemen. It looks like he was moving pretty well when he got up, though. Good news for the Rebels. All right, here we go, a second down, five yards to go. Russell next to the quarterback, Tilkey. Tilkey takes a snap. He's going to keep it himself, cut it back into the middle, and falls forward for a few to the 27. Yeah, good job there coming up to make a play. But one thing you're starting to see is breaking the first tackle. That's what we're starting to see a little bit more of. Aaron Knapp comes up and makes this tackle for the Tornadoes. But watch Tilkey get through the first one. Knapp was able to, I think, get him at the end, but not able to wrap him up and take him down to the line of scrimmage. Tokyo uh, was able to fall ahead and get three yards. Third down and two, under nine to go. Third quarter, Rebels send trips to the right. Russell up tight. Under center, he'll sneak at Tilkey, trying to get a surge and does inside the 25 to the 24, and the Rebels move the sticks. Like that, the, they're letting Preston Tilkey call his own number a little bit, giving him some chances to keep the ball in his hands. Now, Russell's been a factor, but I think just using this as a changeup frees Russell up to make plays, and I think they've got the Tornadoes guessing a little bit. He is a good runner, there's no doubt. When he got to the edge on that touchdown run of 11 yards, he turned the corner and turned it on and got it to the pylon before the Tornadoes. They're running him out of the shotgun, just the same as Padani on the other side. Trips to the right again, Russell gets the call, right side, can't get the edge, breaks a tackle, still on his feet, and gets inside the 20 down to the 19-yard line. He was stopped for a loss, but you're not gonna go haul him down with the jersey. Yeah, he is so good, right? He is getting into open space, and because he's getting into that open space, he knows how to make moves. He's making guys miss, again, putting a foot in the ground, going the opposite direction, reversing field. And the Tornadoes don't have him hemmed in like they did in the first half. Five-yard gain, second down and five, ball in the middle of the field. 19-yard line. Tilkey looks to the bench, gets a play. Russell to his right. Trips out to the left. I'll throw it to the inside, and that inside slant down to about the 16-yard line. Short gainer. Tornadoes had it well covered. Yeah, they did. They kind of saw those receivers setting up the blocks early. They knew that slant was coming, and that safety was able to smell it and come on up and make a play. Gain of three, second down and two from the 16-yard line. They need the 14, under seven to go, third quarter. The Tornadoes have led all the way. Good possession here for Champlin Park. They've been able to choose some clock, move the football. They are in four down territory, I think. Trips to the near side now. Russell gets it. Ball's on the ground, oh, I think. Yeah, I think he turned it over. He turned around after getting the handoff. And he may have been able to pounce on it at the line of scrimmage. That'll set up fourth down and two. So the Rebels get a huge break to keep the play alive. They really do. Is. Yeah, take a look at it. Just squirts yeah. out and it looked like it got right into the hands of Javen Starks. But then it bounced right back into Russell's hands. Well, let's see what they call here on fourth down and two. Ball at the 16-yard line. Russell to the right of Tilkey. Tilkey's going to sprint out near his side. Throw it on the run. It's caught at the 11-yard line. Quite a catch there by Borboom. 
What a great throw by Preston Tilke. On the run, threw it to just a spot where only Boarboom could catch it. That's a tight window to throw it to. It was well covered by the Tornadoes, but just a really good play by the quarterback for the Rebels. First down from the 11-yard line, under six to go. Those are the plays you circle at the end of a game and you wonder if that makes a difference. That could be a big fourth down conversion at the end. Sturdivant way out to the left. Tilke takes a snap, fires it out to the man in the slot. And it's incomplete. That just went right through the hands of yep. Morbu. And Tilke immediately looked back at the Tornado student section, letting them have it, but Tilke just says, shake it right off. And yeah, you can see that one just in and out of the hands. And I wonder if he says, I didn't see it right away, or I felt like I was shielded. The way he kind of motioned to his uh, helmet. There. And we might get a timeout here. Yeah, the Rebels were going to just bunch everybody up the way it looks. And now we are going to get a timeout on the field. Timeout, Champlain Park. 5.39 to go in the corner. This is a big spot for the Sonoka defense, who, as we pointed out at the end of the half, played really well. They need to make a play. They got to make a play here, and they got them back into the position where they were really successful in the first half, which is second and long. We're back to second down and 10. The offense maybe doesn't have as many plays in the playbook in this spot. You're able to guess a little bit easier on defense. Coach Adam Denicky might drop some pressure here. I wouldn't be surprised if you see them bringing Welch or bringing Zach Anderson up the middle, maybe trying uh, to bring more heat with Luke DeShane. Wouldn't be surprised if we see something like that from Anoka here to see if Telke can get rid of the ball a little bit faster. So out of the timeout, here we go, and let's see what Champlin Park does and how they set up. Looked like they were going to bunch it up. And they're going to bring Tilke up under center, and they're going to do it again. Full house backfield. Double tight end set. Second down and 10, 11-yard line. Tilke hands it off. Inside the 10 to the 9-yard line, the ball carrier was Shorenstein. I'll tell you what, if you're Anoka, you're fine with them lining up like that. Now, it's hat on a hat football. It's tough guy football, but it's predictable football. You can bring your linebackers and your corners and your safeties up towards the line of scrimmage because you don't worry about the threat of the pass. So quite a different look for the Rebels. They'll Do it again. Tighten up again. Full house backfield. Behind Tilke under center. Third down and seven. They brought Ball Matthew at the eight-yard line. Russell has it. Still on his feet, near the goal line. Touchdown, Rebels. Arthur Russell is becoming a real factor in this game for the Champlain Park Rebels. We're tied at 13, and the one thing that the defense had to do was try to focus in, and Russell's hobbling just a little bit as he heads back to the sidelines, was Matthew Heinen had come in, the linebacker playing fullback on this play, and Russell just goes right in behind him and also behind number 56 on the offensive line. That's Eric Lee, and there was just nothing but open air for Russell to get in. On to try the extra point, Swanstrom. Shortenstein, the catcher. Snap, spot, kick is no good, and we're tied at 13. Well, they had the bad snap. They got away with it in the first half. This time they get a high snap, and this one ended up just being a hook. Looked kind of like my seven iron uh, off the foot that time of the kicker, and it goes wide, and we're tied at 13. As you can see, they're stretching Russell out. Does it look like he may have had an ankle or a knee or a cramp or something like that? He had to run pretty hard. Now he's up moving around all right. That's good. So 10-play drive took exactly four minutes. Goes 58 yards. And, of course, it all started with that big 15-yard penalty on the punt return. And that really caused the Tornadoes. Yeah. It, it, and we saw that in the first half, too. The Tornadoes were able to get that first touchdown on a short field off a 15-yard personal foul. It just sets a bad tone defensively, right? It feels like you're on your heels right from the jump. It also inspires the bench on the other side. It just changes the momentum. But so, we're tied at 13. That extra point miss, again, could come back, and we could be talking about that at the end, too. 
Tornadoes, two touchdowns through the air. The Rebels, two touchdowns on the ground. Tilke the first. Russell is first touchdown rushing from eight yards out a moment ago. And to kick it off is Swanstrom. Has it teed up right on the 40-yard line. And Anoka will get it back. They did get a first down on their opening drive of the third quarter. That one will bounce and carry all the way into the end zone. Or a touchback. Anoka first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Well, it's a battle for the paddle, and it feels like it now, doesn't it? We're tied at 13, late in the third quarter, bit of a slobber knocker. Here we go. And for Anoka, I, I like the fact that they started out running the football here in the quarter, had some success, then were able to throw uh, the football and take a little heat off Peyton Padani. Yeah, anytime it is a guaranteed passing down, you feel like the defense is just smelling blood, like they're coming after Peyton Padani. The more that they can get the second and short, third and short, open the playbook up, I think the better it's going to get for the Tornadoes. But they haven't had a ton of those in this game. A back way, two touchdown oh catches, and we have a ball on the ground, and that snap gets by Padani, and Ethan Masman has to fall on it. So Masman pounces on it. The 5'9 junior. Boy. And he split time in the game with Terrell Cummings. That O-line has had a tough night for the Tornadoes. That's a bad snap miscommunication from Padani in the center. Olsen. And now again, here we are, second and 16. These are predictable downs, and it gives the uh, Rebels an opportunity to pin their ears back. Matisman is the lone running back. Once again, a back way near side. They're going to play action. They're going to send it to a back way down the near sideline. Jump ball. Caught at the 50. Somehow caught at 30. On his feet. 20. 10. Touchdown. What a catch. How in the world did Avia Beckway catch that ball? An incredible play from Avia Beckway. A great throw from Peyton Padani. And superlatives that was fantastic and the tornadoes retake the lead 84 yards and anoka leads at 19 13. a beckway won the one-on-one -on -one battle at midfield and then did the rest that was just incredible a late switch and they might just go kick the extra point here comes veronica moran so Moran on to try the extra point, one for one. Snap, spot, kick is good. And the Tornadoes are back up by seven here at Goodrich. And that was a big play. Look at this battle. Just a one-handed catch by Afia Bekwe. He turned around, faced the ball, and cradled it with his left hand and was able to then kind of push away from the corner, and he was gone after that. Tornadoes grab the lead right back. They answer with 4.05 to go in the quarter. That drive, two plays, 51 seconds. 84-yard touchdown strike. Peyton Padani to Afia Bekwe. His third touchdown catch of the game, and Padani's second touchdown throw of the game. Of course, the other, Evan wrecking on that razzle-dazzle play. So uh, Anoka answers right back. That was huge for the Tornadoes. They call them 50-50 balls. I call that like a 500 ball. Because remember, you used to play those yeah, games outside right. with your friends. Somebody would throw up a ball for 500, and it was just a jump ball at the end zone. And it was just whoever had the best time jump would win. Afia Beckway wins that battle, gets the big score, third touchdown of the night. He's a little raw at wide receiver. We've had some miscommunication, some tough routes, but man, when it's break ahead speed over the middle, there ain't a whole lot of folks faster than Afia Beckway. Just a phenomenal catch and run. And the line drive down the middle of the field on the ground, picked up at the 10 yard line. Rebels get it out to maybe the 26. We got another flag thrown in there. Could be another illegal block in the back. We'll take a look. Yeah, you, you saw it right there. And the Rebels are going to be set back. So they had it out near the 25. They'll be inside the 20-yard line when they start this drive with 3.48 to go in the quarter. 
A lot of penalties on kickoff. That's another thing you see a lot early in the year. Well, you play so much seven on seven in the summertime and in the spring leagues. So I'm not surprised that the passing games are, are crisp, but it's this type of stuff, right? The kickoff, special teams things. These are the things you don't do when you're playing seven on seven, when you're playing without pads. Those kinds of things come up, and these are the little things that I'm sure Coach Bo, Coach Keenan, they're going to be talking about a ton when they hit practice on Monday. So it'll be the 14-yard line for the Rebels. Preston Tilke finds his team down by seven again. Tilke over the middle. It's caught. Caught out at the 22-yard line. Ball was put down on the deck. I think but I think we have maybe a good catch here for Sturdivant. No, I think, incomplete. I think they're going to throw it back. Incomplete second and 10. Yeah, that was Bergie, by the way, wearing 16. Bergie, yeah, incomplete. He put it on the ground, second down, 10 yards and to go. And that was pretty close because he yeah. caught it and took a step. And I think uh, it, it was possible that that could have been considered a catch. But refs ruled right away that he had dropped it or didn't have total possession of it. It was a wind early. It's now a breeze at the back of the Rebels. And the handoff. Up the middle, not much. Didn't fool anybody, and I think that was the quarterback, Tilke, on the keeper there for a few. And we got a player down, a wide receiver down, it looks like, for the Champlin Park Rebels, and that's never good away from the play. That's Deshaun Sturdivant, and uh, we'll take a look at him in a second. On the play itself, it was just a fake to Russell, and it looked like the Tornadoes bit for a second. It was Tilke who went up the middle. Yeah, Tilke gets it over the 15 to about the 17-yard line, but right now there's concern about Deshaun Sturdivant, 6'1 senior, 180-pounder. He looks like he's having a good time. <laughs> it's like, when are we going home, Mom? Jeez. 3.30 to go, third quarter. What an answer, though, by the Tornadoes. They, they were at one point up 13-0. Rebels make it 13-7 at the half. Anoka picked up one first down, kick it away, 15-yard penalty. Rebels tie the game, and then Anoka comes right back with a huge touchdown. And it looked like all the momentum had moved to Champlin Park. They had scored, even though they missed the extra point. They even have the Tornadoes pinned for a second and 16. Padani throws up the... the the one-on-one -on -one jump ball, and Abekwe makes a play, and it just goes to show you what these big pass plays do to games. They change the entire tide, and right now you feel like the Tornadoes have things back. There's a little more pep in the step of the defense, and uh, got to be liking where you're at if you're Anoka. Sturdivant hobbles off the field, and I don't know if that was a cramp or an ankle, but uh, he is off the field, and we're ready to go. A third down and eight, Champlin Park in the shadow of their own goal line. And they're going to hand it off. And here's some running room over the 30-yard line. That was a quick hitter and a good run there for Luke Gilk. Gilk took the inside handoff and picks up a huge first down for Champlin Park. As you can see, it was a little razzle-dazzle. They gave it to, to, uh, to uh, Tom, uh, Arthur Russell first, and Russell with a quick flip to Gilk. A little misdirection play and had the Tornadoes fooled. So a big gainer there and a first down for Champlin Park at the 30-yard line. Now it's Russell trying the left side, trying to get to the edge. On his feet, may have got a first down out at the 40-yard line. Look out on the chain gang over there. This is pretty good play calling from Champlin Park. They've used Russell as a decoy the last couple of plays. They've pitched it around, and now they just go ahead and give it to Russell on a sweep, a little straight-ahead move to the outside. I love the, the way they're mixing it up and they're using Russell's down again here, maybe that cramping back up. Again, it's first game of the season, and you can train and train and train all you want, but uh, that energy goes quickly after that initial rush of adrenaline, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see more of those kinds of cramp injuries, little strains and muscle pulls, things of that nature at this stage of the game. It has cooled down considerably tonight, but it was a very warm start indeed. So uh, it is first down and 10, Champlin Park out at the 40-yard line. It's been a good drive again for Champlin Park. They've mixed it up beautifully. Austin Tucker to running back to the right of Tilke. And he'll get the call. 
Off the left side on his feet over the 45 to maybe the 46 yard line before he's driven back by the tornadoes. A flag comes in late. A little late shove there, so you wonder what that was maybe about or if it's about something else, but got to keep your cool at this stage in the game here. Both sides, I know it's a rivalry. This could be, uh, this is going to be a think on Anoka. Yeah, Deshane made the play, and it came right at the end of the play, and this is going to be a big one. Yeah, there was a late shove there, and if you're Anoka, we just, you, you can't have these things. These, you got to keep your composure in these moments. 15-yarder all the way down to the Anoka 40-yard line. Wonder how long, I mean, we'll have to wow. see about Russell's situation. He's outstretching, same with Sturdivant. Tilke play action over to the right side. It is caught. This is Boerboom, and Boerboom inside the 35 to about the 33-yard line. Well-designed play. That, that was just... Step to your right and fire. Yeah, Borboom gave a couple little uh, stutter steps like he was going to make a little run down the field and then just stopped and turned, like a little two yard and then turn and was able to catch that one. But the the defense had bought it and he was wide open. There was eight yards of daylight before a tornado could even get to him. And you got to know where McGuire Borboom is at all times. He's a go to target for Tilkey. Gain of seven, second down and three. Running back gets a handoff and darting toward the first down is Tucker. And knee down at the 31-yard line, so it's going to set up third down and short. And you're seeing here, time of possession for Champlain Park in this quarter has been dominant. They are getting everything they want, and now you're starting to see they're starting to get some lanes and getting four and five yards a pop, six yards a pop, setting up third and short. Nick Keenan can run anything he wants in these kinds of downs. Tilkey. With Tucker to his left, slot back to the right, play action, Tilkey rolling out, pass over the middle, caught down at the 24-yard line. That is a first down. That is a big-time quick hitter. Jeps or Jerpseth caught it. Watch this, just a little play action, steps to his left, fires. That could have been a horse collar. A lot of different guys starting to get involved as well here for Champlin Park. Tucker, Russell, Borboom, Jerpseth. Everybody getting involved. Gilk. Ball at the 24, first and 10. Tilke to the sideline. Gets that play. Now ready to go with 10 on the play clock. Play action with Tucker to the right. That's caught. Caught by Berge. Berge inside the 15. Wrestled down right there. And they're swinging it around. That was Austin Meyer on the tackle, but another Champlin Park first down or very close to it. Yeah, he needed inside the 15, and they're going to spot it right there at the 15 yard line. So second down, very short. But Champlin Park's got uh, Anoka on their heels defensively. They're doing whatever they want. They are running when they want, throwing when they want, and they're having success. 35 to go in the corner. Here's Tucker right side, still on his feet, surges his way to the 10, has the first down and more before he's finally dragged down and getting help on that play. Once Meyer kind of grabbed him by the feet and wouldn't let go. Maybe just a total of about two and a half, three minutes of possession for the offense of Anoka. The rest of the time has been all Champlin Park, and it's been power, kind of old school, tough guy football with some good play action passing. Uh, they are starting to really assert themselves in this quarter. It is first in goal at the 10 yard line. They cannot get a first down. It is first in goal. Don't have to run a play if they don't want to. Under eight to go. They do have that breeze at their back. I wouldn't call it a wind at this point. They're just going to let it run out. So the Rebels, when we come back to start quarter number four, will have it first in goal at the 10 yard line. Down by seven. Three in the books here at Goodrich and Oak leading Champlain Park 20 to 13 here on QCTV. CWX. You're not okay to drive. Y G K L V W. Uh, regular you. I taught for 20 years, but I started forgetting my lectures. 
Eventually, he had to quit. My therapist recommended we go to the doctor. The early Alzheimer's diagnosis allowed us to take control of the situation. He's been such a positive force and, and so loving. Thank you. You're welcome. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. On to quarter number four here at Goodrich Champlin Park. First and goal, 10 yard line. They're now moving from right to left. This will be the 11th play of the drive that started at their own 14 yard line with 3.48 to go in the third quarter. Full house backfield behind Tilkey. Last man through is going to get it over the left side inside the 10 near the seven yard line. And that is Arthur Russell with the carry. So he gains three on the play, second down and goal there at the seven yard line. And they're gonna bring it in tight. This is a, this is a quite a different look from the spread they run most of the game. And they uh, certainly liked what they got out of it the first time they did it. They'll give it to the other side. And getting wrapped up immediately was Shornstein. Great defensive play by the Tornadoes. Might have been number 58 getting in there for the Tornadoes first. That was uh, Aaron Knapp as he stepped forward to make a play. Now you got a third down and goal. Can't get a first down as you mentioned. I don't think you can run this full house backfield again. Maybe you can, but you still have Heinen out there playing that big fullback. But now I wouldn't be surprised if they try to pass out of this. Don't be surprised for some play action. Yeah, they move it back to the nine yard line, third down and goal, and they're gonna pack it in tight again. And there's a big collision in the backfield. Rebels couldn't do anything at all but fall forward. This is not what you want for fourth and goal. You only got it at the eight yard line. What happened is Telke steps backward, but it was almost like Heinen and the running backs didn't move and didn't give him a lane and they collided. And Telke, they just have to eat it and plow forward and he got taken down quickly. So fourth and goal from the eight yard line, far hash. Russell's on the field. Why not just stay in the gun and throw it? You've had such success. And I think that's what they're gonna do here. They spread out the wide receivers to the inside. All right, Tilkey is gonna take it. Russell to his left. Tilkey's gonna roll out, tuck it under, and he gets wrapped up. He maybe lost a yard on the play. And the Tornado defense makes a goal line stand. You Great know, play. Might have been a situation of going to the well too many times. They like Tilkey to just hang on to the ball at this stage. They've been running the full house stuff. They've been doing all that, but this may be too much. Yeah, just no room shedding a block and making a phenomenal play for That's the Zach Anoka Welch Tornadoes. Again. Zach yeah. Welch, the junior. Wow. Haven't called Welch's name much since the first quarter, but yep. right there makes potentially the biggest play of the game defensively. Here comes Padani. In the shadow of his own goal line at, looks like the nine yard line to me. The board says the eight, but first down and 10 anyway. They're gonna hand it off and running up the middle. That is Cummings, I believe. Yep. It is Cummings. I was a good I, run. I thought for sure we'd get a Cummings run right there. I think we're going to maybe get another one. Nope, he's going to come out for Mossman. I think Mossman's going to get a carry here too. That's the room they were looking for. A little delay to the running back. Give it to him with a chance to run ahead. I think it's going to be a one-play sit for Cummings, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's back out there shortly. And he gets it out. It'll be a second down and a yard to go. But Annie, the quarterback. Mossman to his right. Two wide receivers split to the near side. Mossman gets a handoff very near a first down before he shoved back. He's trying to move forward, but coming out of the bottom of the pile is Matthew Heinen, the linebacker for Champlin Park. And they're going to move the sticks. He did get forward progress. He needed the 20, and he got the 20. That was a situation where, you know, I give credit to the, to the linebackers like Kapitsky and Jalot. They've been 
kind of taking those edges away. That was a situation where Mossman just ran right away from him as that edge was collapsing. That was a good piece of running by Mossman to pick up the first down. Cummings in the backfield. He's to the right of Padani. Padani straight back. Has some time. Near sideline. Airs it out. Wide open. Caught. Borchers. 20, 20. 10. 5. Touchdown. Tornadoes. 80 yards. Look what a couple of nice running plays do for you, Steve Thompson. Peyton Padani on an absolute dime to Trey Borchers. Borchers was wide open. It's a perfectly thrown ball by Peyton Padani, and it's a big time score for the Tornadoes. How about that? Are they, did they, there's no flag here or anything, is they there? They may have ruled him out of bounds along the near sideline. Oh, we'll, did, oh we'll we got a down that. player. It's Russell. Russell's down again for Champlin. Well, we'll see where they spot this, but I didn't think he was out of bounds. I'd like to see a replay as, as Heidi Beckendorf is checking on Russell again. Let's take a look and see if Borchers does go out of bounds. Again, just a beautiful ball. Let's watch his foot 15. here if he gets out. He's still in there, still in there. I don't see this. I think this is a touchdown. Yeah. It, it, I, I, I don't see anywhere he went and they're going to rule it a touchdown yeah, on the field. Touchdown yeah, absolutely. Touchdown on the field. I was 80 yards. So I didn't know quite what we were doing there, but I think we got it right in the end. A touchdown for Trey Borchers, and it is a two score game. Third for Padani in the game. Three touchdown catches for a Beckway. And the Tornadoes extend their lead to 26 to 13. You may remember in quarter number three, they had an 84 yard touchdown pass. But Danny to a back way, that one's just 80 yards. And yeah, I think, and I think for Arthur Russell, you might want to sit. This could be tough for Champlin tonight because this is the third time he's kind of gone out with cramps. This time he's having a tough time putting weight on that leg. And he's just such a tough kid. And he has played such a hard fought game tonight for the Rebels. But uh, it's taking its toll on him here at the end, and I'm, I'm hopeful for the best because he is such a fun player to watch. So we're going to get another extra point try here for Veronica Moran. 5-7, senior kicker. Two for two on extra points, tries to make it three for three. Moran, captain of the girls' soccer team. Oh, that's a kind of a bad snap. They fake it. They're going to run. DeShane gets driven out of bounds at about the three-yard line. Tornadoes still lead by 13, 26, 13. But how about that here in the second half? 84 yards and 80 yards through the air. And DeShane just bobbled it and took off and ran. You wonder if it was a design fake, the way he popped up out of that stance, Steve. Well, I'll tell you what. They haven't had the ball a long time here, have the Tornadoes, but they've made it work. They've scored 13 points on three possessions, and the defense made a huge hold on the last one, so... Yeah, three plays. It, it took 118 80-yard touchdown pass. And their other touchdown drive here in the half, that was two plays, 80 yards. Or, yeah, 84 yards because they lost four on a run. So they are actually at second down and 14 on that touchdown pass from Podani to Abekwe. And, and that was... Just a two-play, super quick drive as well. Our poor cheerleading squad there for the Tornadoes having a tough time with Neil Diamond. It's tough to coordinate a, a good cheer for Neil Diamond songs, although the crowd over 50 on this side of the row loves it. I know you're a Neil Diamond guy, Steve. Oh, big time. All the vinyl. You, I'm sure you have. You still play it? The vinyl's oh, yeah. back in now, you know. Hey, I, I have the Technique SLP 1200 that's still operating. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the real deal turntable. Just, for, just replace the needle and everything. Oh, yeah. Short well, kick near side. It bounces on a hop bobbled. It's loose. Tornadoes might have it. Tornadoes may have it. And Champlin Park couldn't field it cleanly. Anoka comes out of there with it. Popping out of there with the trophy. 
Who else, Evan Frecking? Evan Frecking, I'll tell you what, has had a terrific football game on special plays, like on these trick plays. Could have had a fake punt for a first down that got called back by a penalty, but he's got a touchdown pass on a trick play. Here he recover recovers the squib kick, and that's just because he's a phenomenal athlete with great instincts for the ball. Look at how fast he gets down the field here after the muff uh, kickoff. Yeah, and it, that was just a mental error by Cole Jerpseth, who should have just pounced on that ball and called it good right there, but he, he tried to grab it, got turned around, and the Tornadoes get it right back. They're up by 13, and here comes Peyton Padani and company. This feels like a time to do the old three-day TV dinner offense and chew on the clock a little bit. Padani has Cummings to his right. Orchard's near his side, toss sweep. Cummings gets cut down at about the 37-yard line. Good defensive play there coming up. Shornstein makes the hit. It'll be second down. I like the idea of getting the ball to Cummings in space, but I really am scared about pitch plays at this stage of the game. You don't want to turn the ball over. I like straight-ahead handoffs in this spot, but Coach Bo knows what he's got. Carson Band back there by the quarterback getting a handle on the play. Peyton Padani wearing number three as it comes in from Coach Bo. And an oak cluttered 6-0 after one, 13-7 at the half. They let it 20 to 13 after three. Cummings up the gut for a couple before he's driven back. And the Rebels were all over that play as they drove him back. Moore was in on the hit, and he and may have got banged up. Yeah, he got slammed hard there because he just ran into a pile of Rebels, and the Rebels just pushed him all the way back to the ground. And here comes Heidi Beckendorf again, who hadn't been all that busy, but now has been pretty busy here the last couple of minutes. It, it, that could be wind as well yep, for as he sure. was driven back. I where think it's just so, too. Like, Ooh. Yeah, helmet off, just trying to get a little air to him. I think that's a, that's a wind play right there. Yeah, and it, th that is no fun, but he should bounce back and be available. Uh, we, we don't know for sure, but he got slammed down to the turf. Terrell Cummings coming off that injury last year, torn ACL. Watched him kind of hobble around the school all year last year, but uh, good kid, good spirits. Comes from a long line. Uh, that coming family has had many a student through the Anoka High School. It's going to be third down and six. They need the 27. And if you stand next to him, you don't think he's a big guy watching him on the field, but if you stand next to him, he is built tough actually it's going to be th I, I think i could call it third down and six yeah well, third third and third and six we're just inside the 35 they need to need the 28 i mean it's almost seven yeah that is a it's a very long six board says five it isn't that it's a very kind scoreboard Padani near side, caught Borchers. That'll be a first down at the 23-yard line. Borchers come up big. Well, Abekwe's going to get the headlines with the three touchdown catches, but I think Borchers with a big touchdown himself, but has also made a couple of these plays, these possession plays, because he's such a crisp route runner, might be the best route runner on the team. Right there was an example of that. He had to run a crisp route, had to be a good throw. They got it. Gain of 11 out in the play. Tornadoes in command now fourth quarter up by 13 clock on the move 645 but Annie takes the snap looks right all the way toward the end zone Borchers can't get a hand on it late and flag. a flag comes in late shove all the way over there on the corner I don't know if Borchers would have been able to make the play but that is interference yeah he was holding on to Borchers at the end good little one-on-one -on -one battle on the outside Little surprised they threw it right there, and I think Champlin Park might have been surprised too. Take a look at the official call here. We'll wait for it. A lot of penalties for the Rebels tonight. A lot of penalties for the Tornadoes as well, but certainly the penalties have come at really inopportune times for the Rebels in this game. It's going to be something they'll go back and think about. Let's take another look at it again. And again, we're on the near side here. Padani throws up the little fade route, and it's right there where he kind of grabs the arm 
and that's what draws the penalty. That was on coverage there from, I want to say that was 37. Was that 37? Yeah, Blamo. Milton Blamo. Yeah, and it, it, it's one of those where I, I don't ultimately know if Borchers is able to get to it anyway, but they call it, and now the Tornadoes are going to have first down and 10, and the ball just inside the 12-yard line, and Peyton Padani goes to work. Padani, the 6'3 junior, three touchdown passes, four overall, the other to Evan Fracking on that. More of a pistol set here for the Tornadoes. Mosman, the running back, close snap, takes a handoff and got hit immediately back at the 15-yard line. That play had no chance whatsoever. Has not been a clean game on the O-line tonight for the Tornadoes and some bad snaps. We've had probably five, six bad snaps on special teams, but also just on the regular offensive sets out of the shotgun. It's going to have to be a conversation for sure for Coach Bo. Both coaches love the fact that they're going to have lots to work on now that they've got some real game film to look at. You can scrimmage all day, but it's nice to have this kind of game film to go back and look at. So dropped a couple on that play out near the 14-yard line, second down. Osman with room up the middle to the goal line. Touchdown! Ethan Mossman and the Tornadoes extend their lead to 32 to 13. Well, I've been looking for them to run the football a little bit more in this second half. This time they get a nice counter play for Mossman as he lines up opposite Padani and gets a nice little room, a little, little crease there off that counter and was able to take it into the house. And that puts them in front by 19, a game that was tied at 13 just a short time ago. All of a sudden, another Tornado's well in front. Another bobbled snap. Deshane on the run's going to throw for two, and that's incomplete. So another poor snap, and Deshane had to improvise. Didn't work out, but the Tornado's up big, 32-13, 5.50 to go in the football game. Yeah, Coach Bo just that... Like I said, if they're going to build a statue for Coach Bo, it's going to be that look right there where his hands on his hips, just an incredulous look. <laughs> and that's exactly what he's getting right there. Tough night uh, in that center exchange. So the Champlain Park Rebels, who battled back to tie, Anoka came back, got a quick touchdown on that 84-yard touchdown pass from Padani to Abekwe. And... It has been all tornadoes since. The Rebels have had no answers since that play. Well, they talk about in baseball, Steve, the three-run homer can be the, great, uh, the yep. great equalizer or the great thing that wins games for you. But nothing much hurts more like 60, 70, 80-yard touchdown passes Ooh. in high school football. Those things can just absolutely change the complexions of games. Just that one play to a Beckway, I really thought, just flipped the whole script. By the way, the Tornado's right back here next Friday night, September 8th against St. Michael Albertville Champlain Park. They go home next Friday night and host the defending 6A champ, Maple Grove Crimson. And the kickoff right down the middle of the field. Shorenstein at the 13. Up the middle of the field to the 30, maybe the 32 yard line. And now for the Rebels, maybe not rally for the win, but get something going going into next week. Yeah, you just think about what happened here. They were so they they give up the big play to a Beckway, but then they do a great job. They drive it all the way down. They get inside the 10 yard line towards the end of the third quarter, and then they get stuffed in four straight plays. They're not able to do much with that, and then from there they get the big touchdown to Borchers, and everything's kind of out the door. But you got to think, just seven minutes ago. This was a tie game, yeah. and you're dry, or you're down by six, and you're driving for the tie. That breeze has picked up a little bit. Rebels working into it. There's Tilke throwing it off to the right. Tucker a catch. Blockers in front, out to the 40-yard line. That is a gain of seven on the play. It'll be second down and short. And with Russell out of the game, they've gone to Tucker quite a bit. Hibbler came up, made a nice play there. Tucker a little bigger than Russell, maybe not as shifty, but can definitely, uh, is sure-handed with those plays out of the backfield. Tilke rolling left, throws it, caught, 50-yard line, and more. That was a good throw and catch. Bergie hauled it in, 
And they move the sticks. Preston Tilke has had a terrific second half in this game. He has thrown the ball on the money. They've gotten him into positions where he's got windows to throw it into, and he is hitting targets. Bergie's made some plays, and uh, Borboom especially also has made some big plays for them. Gain of 13, Bergie again over the middle to the 35, fumbled it. Ball on the deck, but they might say he's down at the 35-yard line. I think picking it up was Sturdevent uh, as he was able to recover that fumble. Look, it's, it's out right there, right there, Tim's out. And then just falling on it alertly was Deshaun Sturdevent back into the game, and that's able to save a turnover. Net gain of 12, first down, Tilke over the middle, Berge, catch, still on his feet at the 15, down to the 14-yard line. Wow, they are on the move, gain of 21. Tornadoes are allowing the open field to stay wide open, so Tilke taking advantage of it, throws a beautiful slant to Berge right there. And the Tornadoes are trying to scramble to get subs. 4.35 to go, and now... Yeah, Play coach, is stopped. Coach Bo will take a timeout. Yeah, kind of slow it down and give his D a bit of a breather because they have been on their heels. And it, it's one of those where Champlin Park, you know, finally hitting some rhythm here with time running out in the football game. And that could be a fact where Anoka's laying back, not wanting to give up the big play and Rebels taking what's available. Yeah, but at the same time, they're getting too big of chunks here. So you want the time to go a lot faster than this. And uh, if you're allowing them to pick up 15, 20 yards at a time, that's sort of the opposite of the prevent defense. So now you got to tighten things up here around the goal line. But quite a game. Anoka once again let it 6-0 after 113-7 at the half. It's kind of fun, Steve, to see this schedule. Yep. Uh, for both teams, really, but to see Blaine on this schedule, to see Coon Rapids on this schedule for the Tornadoes, some of those natural rivals yep. again. It's so good to see that now these games are going to have some extra importance and some extra energy to them. Toki fires it out. A bubble screen inside the 10, down to the five-yard line. Pretty good play, well-designed play there. And Dreesy makes the catch for the Champlin Park Rebels as they move quickly. Nice, yeah, yeah, I agree with you, Tilke. They're giving him lanes to pass, and he's doing a good job. Tilke rolling right, far side of the field, toward the end zone, caught. Touchdown, Champlin Park. And it's now 32 to 19 with 4.08 to go in the game. And that was Berge again. Way too easy for Champlin Park. And it was a great drive for Berge as he just had space. And Tilke was just playing a little two-man game there getting it to him every time he had a chance. And I have to think that that's not what the doctor ordered for Anoka. They did not want that happening that quickly. They go they for two. Spread him out. Tilke rolls to the right. In trouble. Still scrambling. Throws while he was headed down to the turf. And that two-pointer goes nowhere. Anoka's lead is still 13, but Champlin Park right down the field. And they go... 77 or 67 yards for that it, touchdown in short order. You get a look at the touchdown there, and I like the fact that they they it felt like they had kind of bunched everything to the near side, spread the receivers out up top, and that allowed for a lot of open space on the high side for Bergie. So when he was able to make that cut in the end zone, he had a window to pass into, and it was an easy one. So two point try, no good. Special team struggling a bit. The two-point tries, extra points. Certainly extra point tries when she's had a chance. Veronica Moran's been able to knock him through. Absolutely. Uh, she's, uh, you know, she's got a great leg. She can kick it. I mean, she's yep. she's uh, a, a bomber also coming off a knee injury, but uh, happy to be back out playing soccer and also kicking. She can, she's an accurate kicker, and she's got a leg. I don't know how far away they want to use her for these things. Maybe just PATs, but... She's an athlete, too. I don't think she minds getting in there and, and bumping around. Although I'm sure Coach Lucas Camargo would mind that very much so, the soccer coach. <laughs> now you quite a wonder here. Hands team for the Tornadoes. you got to anticipate everything. Squib kicks, onside kicks, anything. you got to be ready for it here as Hibbler's back to receive it. A deep one if he gets it, but he's the only one back there. Swantenstrom tees it up. Everybody ready with 4.08 to go. Tornado's still up by 13. Onside kick right side. 
and it's grabbed out of the air. Good play there by Parker Seaman, where number 21 gobbled that up and went down to the turf here at Goodrich Field, and Anoka's going to get it back. Yeah, it's a good piece of coaching there for Anoka. They had to know all of those scenarios were coming. Potential squib, you could have had uh, an onside, and they were ready for it. Hands guys were on the field, and they made sure they got it. 4.05 to go in the game, and... Both teams two timeouts, Steve. I expect Champlin Park to try to use those timeouts and try to get off the field quickly here. Peyton Badani, Ethan Mosman, the running back. He had a touchdown run on the last drive from 13 yards out. First rushing touchdown of the game for the Tornadoes. They had four through the air. There's one down on the deck. And th that could have been a knee down. They they're lucky that wasn't a turnover. Padani hands it off, lay it. Mosman gets swarmed under after a loss. And now a timeout, Champlin Park. Yeah, another terrible uh, snap there from the offensive line. They have got to get that shirt up here a bit, especially at this stage of the game. You can't have a turnover. It's the one thing you can't have, and it's got to be a clean exchange from center to quarterback. So All right, here's our Rebel schedule, and we mentioned the defending champ, Crimson, uh, come to – Rebels Stadium next Friday night. Then they're on the road at uh, Seal Coon Rapids, St. Michael, Albertville, and Blaine the next five. And what, what, what's crazy about a football season, here it is opening night, and before you know it, you're at the midway point, and then all of a sudden the weather is getting cold, and you, you're talking playoffs. It, it goes really quick. Sure does. By the time you hit that MEA break, you're talking playoffs yeah. and all that other stuff. And uh, I mean, we were just talking about that a little bit today as our teachers were gathering. It's like, man, we have two home games done after the first week of school. Homecoming's coming, you know, third week of the school year. Yeah. It is amazing. And we, we've got that heat settling in over Labor Day. And first day of school on Tuesday looks like a warm one. But before you know it, all these people out here in shirt sleeves and shorts, et cetera, summer wear, that'll change in a hurry. Except for you, of course, because you do not bun You don't need to bundle up. You run warm all the time, Steve. Yeah, I don't know. Not uh, the older I get, the more I need to bundle up. <laughs> Here comes Anoka with the lead by 13 late in the game. My husband left side, not much. He'll lose more yardage back to the 41 yard line, and they'll force Champlin Park to use their final timeout with 3:48 to go in the game. And right now, Anoka's just. Time on their side for sure. Now, I think third down in a mile, I think you run it again. You burn the 40 seconds, and you kick it away. Uh, that's kind of, I mean, Coach Bo, that's usually not the stuff he wants to do, but I have to think that that's what he's going to do in this spot. Make sure you get a clean exchange here. Make sure, you know, maybe you get a delay. You get a draw play, and maybe you pick yourself up another six, seven, eight, nine yards, make it a good spot for Frecking to get a punt deep and see if you can't pin the Rebels a little bit. It's huge to win the opener. It's huge to win a rivalry game. There, there, there's so much on it where it's just all about getting it to the finish line at this point in the battle for the paddle here at Goodrich Field tonight. And teams are talking it over and... And I think this is where the defense on Chamlin Park, they're talking gap integrity. Like, you, we've got them pinned. Let's not oversell. Let's not make any mistakes here and create an opening where somebody can rattle off a 15-yard run and give Coach Bo something to think about. You want to stop things quickly, so stay home and bottle things up. If there's a pass, I can't imagine it's anything other than, like, a safe screen pass. And number one, no turnovers for the Tornadoes. Podani, Mazman to his right, takes that snap. He's going to roll out, set up a screen. It's caught. How about that? A screen pass. Maybe get some back to the original line of scrimmage near the 46 or the 47-yard line. And the good news is it's a completed pass, and the clock continues to move, and the Rebels can't stop it. But that, that's a bit of a dangerous move. Yeah, but maybe they felt like it was the safer of the two. Like, instead of maybe running a draw play, you can run a safe screen, pick up three, four yards. But a good job by Champlin Park there of, again, staying home, staying in your lane, not allowing a big play to break off there. And now they're going to bring a play in, and th this might be one where 
But Danny's just going to do a little quick kick. They may run it all the way down to one, threaten like they're going to go for it. Can't imagine they will. Yep, timeout called right there, right yeah. at the three-minute mark. Yeah, and you, and you see more and more college teams run that quick kick where it's kind of like they're going to line up and then the quarterback drops back and then they just kick it out of there. We got so much coming up, Steve, on QCTV. It's unbelievable. We've got the boys and girls soccer action coming up. Centennial at Champlin uh, next week. Some volleyball, the very good Anoka volleyball team. They look like they're going to have a very good season. And they by the, the way, Cardinals. speaking of that, Anoka's got a good volleyball team. Champlin Park. Uh, in the, in the top two or three to begin the year as well as some great volleyball in this snack of the woods. Yeah, we're going to have some great volleyball this yeah. year on QC. Then we're at Andover next week. Mankato West making a drive wow. to go hang out with the Huskies on a Friday night. A perennial 5A power. That'll be a good one. And Andover's had a lot of good football over the years. So, And then, of course, a parade. Of course. You're a big parade guy. Absolutely. Father Hennepin Parade is near and dear to my heart over in Champlin. That is a QCTV event in June every year. Do you go hang out and catch candy? Um, they throw it at me. They throw it at you. I, I, I'm not actively scrambling for candy, but... I'm kind of uh, like an elephant for that. I just go in there and just grab, like, I kind of hoover it off the ground. That's kind of my well, thing. Well, you know, in, in the thing, the thing is, if... Uh, Tootsie Roll is pretty good every now and then, especially when it's been warmed up on the pavement. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> That's a little tough to deal with there. All right, Frecking's punt, big time. Got to get a snap. On a hop, bobbles it in trouble, got it away. Short kick near side. Rebels field on a hop. They have it at the 40 down to the 36-yard line. Well, that went bad for the Anoka Tornadoes. How he got the kickoff, I have no idea, but the Rebels have it right back. First and 10 at the 36-yard line. Yeah, just another bad snap. I mean, the, the snapping problems for the Tornadoes tonight are, are going to be, I mean, it, it's not over here. A quick score for the Rebels, and this is a, a very dangerous game. Playing with fire are the Tornadoes. You've got to be fundamentally sound. Have not had that these last couple possessions. First and 10, 36-yard line. Padani with room, 35 on the run, trying to get out of bounds. Dives out of bounds at maybe the 29-yard line. That'll stop the clock. Remember, they're out of timeouts. 2.42 to go. They're down by 13. It is doable. Yeah, this is where Anoka needs to keep them in bounds and keep them away from the sticks. Try to keep everything in front of you and keep the Rebels in the field of play. So a gain is six on the play. His second down and four yards to go, 30-yard line. Tilkey, the quarterback. Tilkey's going to roll to his left, trying to get to the edge. Gets a block, throws toward the end zone, or toward the inside the 10, and that falls incomplete. Boreboom couldn't come up with it. There's a good-looking opportunity there. Boreboom had a step. Threw it in between a little zone coverage from the Tornadoes as Hibbler was playing the inside line. Just trying to sit down inside the soft spot of the zone, but not able to connect. Sets up third down in a short eh, three or four. Yeah, and you're, you're still at a point with 237 to go in the game that you don't have to throw to the end zone. Job one is to move the sticks. You can't afford to be in a tough fourth down situation. Tilkey behind the intended receiver. Had him, but threw it behind him. Probably the worst pass Tilke's thrown all night because he's been radar on those quick slants. That time he just overthrew it, overcooked it, and it sets up a fourth down and three. Here's your ball game. Drizzle, the intended receiver, just had no chance. He did get his fingertips on it behind him. And now with 2.34 to go, Rebels down by 13, facing fourth down and three, 30-yard line. Going to hand it off. Tucker breaks one tackle, tries to break another, but can't get a first down. He is wrestled down just inside the 30-yard line, and the Anoka Tornadoes are going to get it back. I got to tell you, I'm a little surprised by that call. The way Tilkey's been throwing the ball, I would have given him a chance to try to get me a first down, either through a quarterback run or a quick hitter, something but I'm not sure I want to try to run for four yards sideways against the defense of the Tornadoes. And uh, it's going to set the Tornadoes up in a position where they can 
take the air out of the ball. And they're going to come onto the field. Peyton Padani getting a play. Peyton Padani, three touchdown tosses. Evan Frecking has a touchdown throw and a touchdown run for Ethan Mosman. Running try back to get a is last coming. Second sub. 229 to go into the game. First down and 10. Anoka at their own 30 yard line. They hand it off right side. Cummings on his feet. Probably didn't want him to go out of bounds, but he did anyway. 223, clock stop. Yeah, he was trying to get to, he, I think he was maybe trying to stay in bounds, but they gave him a little shove at the end, and that got him out of bounds as Cummings tried to run and turn it up the boundary. Got him to the 33-yard line, second down, seven yards to go. Anoka. Little, yeah, I, I expect this one to be a little more up the middle, Steve. I don't think they're going to try to run to the corner this time. I think they're going to run Mossman on a little draw or an inside handoff. Here's Mossman off that left side. Not much. Maybe the line of scrimmage. Doesn't matter. Clock on the move. Rebels can't stop it. Well, now, big thanks to our crew here tonight. Wanna led by Ryan Mush. Everybody was here early. Did a great job tonight in the football opener. Yeah, big undertaking by the crew for football. Lots of lots of ground to cover out here. And everybody does just such a terrific job. Makes our job pretty easy, Steve. Yeah, we just show up and yeah. chat. They're down seven yards to go. Anoka the lead. Trying to open one and oh. They were one and eight a year ago. The Rebels four and five. But trying to win the paddle. That one's incomplete. Not sure about that. I don't get that either. I gotta tell you, I know Bo likes to throw the ball, and I know he doesn't want to change who he is and what they're doing, but that was so dangerous. I mean, that there wasn't a tornado within 100 miles of that ball. There's not a lot of good that comes from that, and it stops the clock, which I just, I, I would have just assumed hand it off, take it down under a minute, but uh, I'm, I'm a little surprised. Both teams, some interesting, curious calls here down the stretch. Far, bar, far be it for me to ever question Coach Bo. I'm never gonna do that, nor will I question Coach Keenan, but uh, I'm a little puzzled by some of that. Evan Fracking to punt it away with 136 to go. Tornadoes lead at 32 to 19, and we're going to get a timeout. You know, when we think players of the game tonight, Steve, uh, I feel like you you got to really look at, at one guy who made a couple of huge plays to change this thing around, no. and that's Avi Abekwe. Three yeah. touchdown catches. Yeah, terrific throw here. Padani, and he went up into traffic, knew he was going to take a hit. That That's a great play by Abekwe there. But on his second touchdown or third touchdown catch of the game is just one for the books. This one was just an easy one here. This yeah. is, they don't get much easier than this one from Frecking. Yeah, Frecking to a wide open a back way, and he just walks in from 20 yards out. And that, that was a great call by the Tornadoes. But this, this catch and run on his third here, Padani hits him at midfield, spins out of it, and then runs to pay dirt. That was beautiful. Early nomination for catch of the year right yeah, there. Yeah, it, it was fantastic. Really good. Got to get a clean snap here. And it's Another not. Another one. Another one to Hopper. Blocked by the Rebels. Picked up by the Rebels. And Champlin Park's going to have it at the 14-yard line. Oh. This is why Jaden Fox got in there. This is why I want to run the football and take it under a minute because we haven't shown the ability to get a clean wow. snap when you need it, and you want to not give them time. And now the Rebels have the one commodity that you were hoping to take away from them, and that is some time. They got a minute 32 in great field position. Yeah, the throw on third down still is puzzling. Tilke toward the far corner, incomplete. No flags. Yeah, if you, right now, if you're Anoka, just don't commit penalties. And again, keep everything in front. Defend the defend the end zone. I mean, you still got a two-score lead. Like it's still you're still in a good spot, but it's just it doesn't need to be this tight. I 
I mean, I mean, we've probably had a dozen bad snaps. Maybe, maybe more than that tonight for the Tornadoes. Tilkey under heat. Right back toward the end zone. There's a jump ball. Touchdown, Champlin Park. And that's Gibismore. Beautiful throw by Preston Tilkey. And again, the Tornadoes are playing with fire. And they have got to be very careful on this next kickoff as Jaden Gabayismore makes a beautiful catch. Watch Tilkey again. He's surrounded by tornadoes, has to buy some time, so he rolls out and heaves. And again, another situation where the tornadoes aren't looking back at the ball. They're playing the uh, receiver, not turn. See, it's coming. Wyatt Rothram's got to turn around and know that ball's coming. Somebody's got to yell, ball, 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 and he's got to be able to turn and see that. Snap, spot, kick, good. Extra point made by Swanstrom. And now it's 32 to 26 with 119 left. Wow. It all comes down to this kickoff. You have got to get it if you're Anoka. And if you don't get it, it's going to be a very stressful final minute. If you get the kickoff, you win the game. It's that simple. So everything, your focus, your concentration levels, your planning, your scheme, your fundamentals, all have to come in right here. And if you're Champlin Park, you need the best onside kick you can come up with. And they've got a good kicker in Swanstrom. I, th I think the last time he tried the onside kick was pretty darn good. And Parker Seaman made an outstanding play. He did exactly what you wanted to do, shield the ball with your body cover up go down to the turf yeah everybody who's got some hands with good sticky gloves on needs to be on the field to pick this one up this is the football game the battle for the paddle and it's come down to the little things bad snaps penalties a couple interesting play calls they're up 32 to 13 but two, five two, fifty-two to go. Five two very to go bad in the game. punt snaps just have changed everything. Changed the whole complexion. Here's Swanstrom. Line drive caught at the fifty-yard line. Line driver grabbed, and that Oof. was a terrific play there by Luke, Luke Deshane. Deshane. Yeah. yeah. Oof. I think you take this under center, if you want my honest opinion. I don't think you sit oh. in your shotgun. I think you get right under center and say, put this right in my hands because I'm taking a knee. Don't celebrate yet if you're Anoka. You haven't gotten a snap off yet. And you're going to need at least two snaps. Yeah, I would not sit in shotgun here if I was Anoka. I would get up on the line, but I don't think, again, that's their style. So they're going to get into their version of victory formation. And that is the quarterback, Peyton Padani, takes a snap, takes a knee, back at the 45-yard line. Don't need to snap it one more time. Yep, they're going to take this as far down as they can, and they got to snap it one more time, and then the Tornadoes will win the battle for the paddle. Tornado students getting ready to head out onto the field and go with celebrate. They will move to one and O, oh, barring a problem. Takes a snap, takes a knee. And that's, that should do it. That's it. That's it. The Anoka Tornadoes have knocked off the Champlin Park Rebels in the battle for the paddle this year at Goodrich Field. The Tornadoes now one and O. Oh. They get St. Michael Albertville here in eight days. Champlin Park 0 and 1. I return home to take on the defending champ, Maple Grove Crimson, and uh, a wild football game. Yeah, you know, for both sides, they're going to say it wasn't pretty, and it certainly wasn't at times. So there's things to work on, but there was also some really some moments of brilliance tonight from both teams as well. So there's a lot to build on for Champlin Park and for Anoka. The good news for Anoka is this is a game they don't win a year ago. This is a game they win this year, and that's a big confidence booster for the Tornadoes that, hey, we didn't, we made some mistakes, we turned the ball over, we had some blocked punts, we had penalties, we had negative plays, and yet still we find a way to win a game against a rival and bring home the paddle. 
only speaks well for what could be a very good season for Anoka. Peyton Padani, three touchdown passes, three touchdown catches in the ball game. Bravi Abekwe, a touchdown run for Ethan Mosman. Oh, by the way, a touchdown throw for backup quarterback Evan Frecking, who also contributed in a lot of other ways for the Tornadoes tonight. Meanwhile, Champlin Park, pretty good play out of Preston Telke, their quarterback. Arthur Russell uh, carried a big load tonight, got banged up playing on both sides of the football tonight. Rebels made it interesting late in the ball game, but Anoka prevails the final 32 to 26. Once again, a big thanks to our QCTV crew led by Ryan Mush. Big thanks to Tim Anderson. Always good to work with you, Tim. Hit him straight. There's still plenty, plenty of golf to be played this fall. We'll work on that for you. Yeah, Steve Thompson from Goodrich. Once again, our final score. Anoka beats Champlin Park 32-26. Good night.